Only four teams have survived the World League season and advanced to the next round. The high-scoring Orlando Thunder. The defensive-minded European champions from Barcelona. Sacramento won the divisional war and advanced from the West. Yes, baby, great catch! And the only team to have beaten the other three, the Birmingham Fire. Now it's playoff time, and the Fire, despite its victories over the other contenders, advanced as the wildcard team. Their ground control offense is powered by running back Elroy Harris. The Thunder enter the playoffs as the league's Eastern Division champions. Their high-powered, wide-open offense is led by quarterback Scott Mitchell, whose future lies with the Miami Dolphins. His favorite target is Redskins property Joe Howard Johnson, who has tallied five touchdowns on the year. It's the World League playoffs, the Birmingham Fire, and the Orlando Thunder next on USA. rapidly growing Central Florida, Orlando has become an international tourist attraction. And tonight, Orlando excited because the World League playoffs have come to town. And yes, there are Thunder fanatics who will be easily seen tonight in their fluorescent lime green shirts. It's the World League playoffs, the Orlando Thunder hosting the Birmingham Fire. Last year, Birmingham blew Orlando away. Two weeks ago, these teams met again in Birmingham, and the Fire escaped with a narrow one-point victory. Ten Orlando turnovers punctuating the prior two meetings between these teams. And welcome, everybody, to USA's coverage of the World League playoffs. I'm Ted Robinson. Of course, these are two teams that really come to this game in different ways. Birmingham has 15 starters back from last year when they also made the World League playoffs. Stability and continuity led to a successful season. Orlando rehauled their team completely from last year, and they wound up with the best regular season record in the league at 8-2. And, and it's a pleasure to be alongside John Robinson again for this playoff game tonight. And, John, two teams that got here in very different ways. Yeah, their philosophy of offense and their philosophy of how to win is very different. Orlando wants to rely on their quarterback, Scott Mitchell. They'll spread everybody out and let Scott attack with the short passing game. Birmingham has to defend that short passing game, come up and tackle those receivers. Birmingham, on the other hand, they want to play the old-fashioned way, play defense well and run the ball well. If they can get their runners, Harrison Bell running effectively, that's their way to win the game. It's amazing. Orlando has not made many mistakes this year. The fewest sacks, fewest interceptions in the league against a Birmingham defense that likes the big play. This is All that stuff's great, but now it's playoff time. Now it's the clutch, and strange things happen. Uh, some people rise to the occasion. Others fall by the wayside. It's going to be an exciting game. And the Orlando Thunder hope that their biggest home crowd of the year will spur them on. It's playoff action in the world league. And we'll have it for you on USA in just a moment. This year, the Lake Edna players present the Wild West Review. Tonight, director Lauren Clark tried to motivate her cast of cowboys with new KFC Honey Barbecue Chicken. Fried chicken glazed in a special sauce with a touch of honey. The chicken was unbelievable, as were a few of the performances. Try the two-piece Honey Barbecue Roundup meal, just $2.99, or the eight-piece meal, just $9.99, for a limited time in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. This is not what you want in a shave. Now you've got the edge. This 
is the shave with six rich lubricants. This is the shave that reduces irritation. This is the shave. For less irritation, you've got the edge. Edge, proud sponsor of the NBA Most Valuable Player Award. A six-year-old in her first two-wheeler. My favorite kind of customer. But no sooner do they take off her training wheels and someone takes off with her bike. So her father calls the police, and then Citibank Visa. Well, the bike never turns up, but it turns out Citibank has a program that replaces it free. I see what Citibank does for their customers. That's why I became one. Not just Visa, Citibank Visa. The World League Playoffs on USA are being brought to you by Kentucky Fried Chicken. Nobody's cooking like today's KFC. By Ed Shaving Gel. For less irritation, you've got the edge. And by Budweiser, the king of beers. With that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a bud. Also with us tonight, the inimitable Michael Barkan. He's standing by right now with the World League Coach of the Year, Galen Hall. That's right. We're going to find out what this Coach of the Year is going to do. You've got a wide open type of offense, and Birmingham plays a more conservative style game. How are you going to offset? How are you going to win this game? Well, we, we, we cannot allow them to control the football on us. Our defense has got to stop the running game. We, we cannot turn the ball over when our offense has it. We turned it over three times uh, two, two weeks ago up there, and, and they beat it. So uh, we we got to play better in offense, and we got to stop their running game. Since you clinched the division, you've had uh, two wins squeaked out and one loss. I guess they'll be a little bit more motivated tonight? Yes, they are. They, they, they know what this game means, and they're ready to play. All right, you know, you got uh, your 20th uh, reunion at Penn State. This guy's an old Penn State quarterback. You got your 20th reunion next week. What happens if you're in the World Bowl? Well, I, I'd rather be in Canada. All right, there you go, Ted. All right, there's the man that Galen Hall hopes will take him there. Lefty Scott Mitchell from Utah, who was quoted in the Miami Herald yesterday, John. Rather bold statement. He said, if I'm not the number two quarterback for the Miami Dolphins this year, I want out. Well, I think sometimes 24-year-olds uh, make those kind of statements. Uh, but, and he's had a great year. This has been a great experience for him. I think he has a lot of promise, and I'm sure Don Shula feels great about what he's accomplished this year with uh, Orlando. And on the other side, it's a different story. This is a veteran, Mike Norseth, who's bounced around a lot of NFL camps. He has played a grand total of four minutes in an NFL game in his career, but he has done a nice job simply winning in Birmingham. Yeah, he has, and they don't they don't have good numbers in the passing game, but but they make key plays in the passing game to keep drives alive. They try to run the football when they get down in close, and he's been a good leader for them. Chan Gailey, the Birmingham coach, longtime assistant and offensive coordinator for the Denver Broncos. And Chan Gailey really believes in the togetherness, which is an often abused term in sports, but his team really personifies that. They have so many players back from last year, and you watch them practice, John, you see they really are a team. Yeah, and they rely on the team concept to win. Everything about their idea of winning is not based on one or two stars. It's based on everybody pulling together. Philip Doyle is the kicker for Birmingham, and he'll just... Knock a line drive deep into the end zone. Grantis Bell will down it there. Bell down. And the Orlando Thunder will take over from the 20-yard line. And if your color and tint dials are not working on your TV, well, you'll know them tonight because the fluorescent lime green uniform should show up brightly on your screen. Scott Mitchell, lowest interception percentage in the World League this year. And in the short passing game at a high percentage. One of the two running backs, either Roger Vick or Daryl Clack, both NFL vets, will be there at all times. Joe Howard Johnson is the leading receiver. And a good offensive line. Rick Cunningham, former Indianapolis Colt, anchors it on the left side. And here's a reverse give to Joe Howard Johnson, and he has a lot of room. Now a little wrinkle by Orlando on the first play, and Arthur Hunter finally brings down Joe Howard Johnson after 21 yards. Here's the three-man front for Birmingham. Tony Bowick starting at the nose instead of the injured Daryl Phillips. John Brantley was an all-World League selection this week. And so was John Miller in the secondary, but Arthur Hunter in the secondary will wear helmet hey, cam hey, tonight. Hey. Hey. And the Thunder going up there with the no-huddle attack. 
Well, the, the Thunder are coming out attacking. Ball start, number 73, five yards, still first down. That was Kevin Allen, the former number one draft pick of the Philadelphia Eagles, who moved quickly, and that cost Orlando five. Joe, 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 Joe. You can see here they've got five receivers out. There's nobody in the backfield with Scott, uh, Scott Mitchell. He's going to get lonely there. But they're only rushed three. And the quick hitter is complete, but a very short game. Joe Howard Johnson on the catch. And Anthony Hinton, linebacker for Birmingham, makes the tackle. That's what Birmingham has to do. They have to tackle the receivers in their tracks in that short passing game. See Scott Mitchell pausing, looking at the wristband. That has all the plays for Orlando. Gives straight ahead, and Daryl Clack spins out across the 45. Oh, good game by Clack. Picks up eight, and will leave Orlando at third down and five. Here we get a look at the helmet cam. Our, the safety man, Art Hunter, has to come up and make this tackle. You get a look at it from his standpoint. Art Hunter felt that one, and so did Clack. Out of the gun, third and five, and that's a catch for a first down. First down reception by Willie Davis, Central Arkansas. Eight yards and a first for Orlando. Of course, you weren't league it's veterans it's know it's that, that Orlando Sorry. calls the plays in strictly by number. And then Scott Mitchell will look on his wristband, which all the offensive players will. Determine the play. He pulls Birmingham off. They've got a free down here. Shuttle to Joe Howard Johnson. And the play will gain almost five. Well, they'll take the penalty because they'll get the five yards and the down over again. You can see just how dy uh, dynamic this offense is. They've got a, a group of plays kind of rehearsed, I think, for their first series of downs, and they're coming Bayless after. Coming you. Okay. And that's uh, and that's and uh, Birmingham just has to kind of ride it out. Offside, sides, left defensive end, five yards from the previous spot, still first down. Otis Moore, although Pella McDaniel's on the other side was also in the zone. So that cost Birmingham five. It'll be first and five here at the 41-yard line of Birmingham. Hot, hot. Now a four-man rush and a pass incomplete. Intended for Grantis Bell and the coverage by Tracy Sanders. That time, uh, Birmingham kind of uh, played a man-to-man. -man. Everybody just picked a guy and covered him. Watch, you see the, re the, the replay here. It's just straight man-to-man -man coverage. It's harder to complete short passes than man-to-man -man because your receiver has to be running at full speed, running Officer. away from the defender. Officer. Green, green. Now they hand it off straight yeah. ahead to Daryl Clack, former 1,000-yard runner at Arizona State. Three years the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, no, let's go. Uh, want to go reverse? Yeah. Red, uh, no, what, what's the number? Be left 19. Okay, give me left. Yeah, I got you. Hold what on. do you want? Uh, I, I want to go left reverse. Left 19. 21. 21. 21. Scott, yeah. 21. Red 21. I just cut them up 21. Galen Hall's going to get a break here because Tony Bowick of Birmingham no, no, is no, injured, no, no, so this will give him time to regroup, make sure they've got the right play on third down and a long two. Now, Tony Bullock, this is a tough injury for Birmingham, John, because the, the other nose man, Daryl Phillips, is banged up. That's why he's not starting. Yeah, Tony looks like his knees bother him. Yeah, I know, I know. He's got a reverse coming here. It's third down and three. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll get a pass rush up the field, which may get somebody in the way. Bullock doesn't look bad. He's running off the field. So that's good news. And Phillips is in there now at the nose. But, and he was banged up well enough last week, but that's why he's not starting. Birmingham had a tough game. They had to go to Ohio last Sunday and win to make the playoffs, and they did so in the final two minutes of the game. Philip Doyle kicked a field goal to get the fire into the playoffs. And it's Joe Howard Johnson. He has to beat Sanders, and he can't do it. And Birmingham's defense answers its first big challenge of the night, a six-yard loss, and the Thunder will have to punt. Well, that was an excellent play by Sanders. He came up there. The coverage rotated him up, and he saw the reverse. You see here's the fake inside. Joe Howard Johnson has to run laterally for a long way to make this play go. Once Sanders had him slowed down, it was all over there. Ray Criswell is the punter for Orlando. And he is a new snapper. 
His second week with the team, George Crest, and he, oh, he almost airmailed it. And Criswell made a great save. And the punt is going to be down inside the five. From the brink of disaster to the to a beautiful effort. As Criswell barely saved that snap by Crest, and then the kick is down by Winfred Bryant of Orlando inside the five. So our lab guys wanted me to explain the advanced formula in new Rain Dance car polish. I told them, hey, forget that. Just show how easy it is to wipe off. They said no. They'd rather show how new Rain Dance lasts longer than those once a year polishes. Something about this special ingredient makes water beat up better longer. I said, nah, show the car. They said no, maybe the bottle. I said car. They said bottle. New Rain Dance. Hey, you can't argue with science. You'll find advanced formula Rain Dance at these fine stores. said the country Columbus first set foot on. You're not only right, you're close. The Bahamas. For a free guide to the hundreds of vacations that make it the Bahamas, just call us. Now back at the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, a lively crowd on hand here tonight for the Thunder. But Birmingham takes over for the first time. Mike Norseth out of Kansas. We told you the numbers won't look pretty. Only four touchdown passes on the 12 interceptions. We've got two good running backs. Elroy Harris and Jim Bell will alternate as the main back. And Willie Boyer is the key wideout. He's the possession man. Eddie Britton, the speed man. The three, it's Harris. And he's stopped at the line. He got virtually nothing. And Rick Andrews, 91 for Orlando led the surge. We'll see a lot of Rick Andrews tonight because he's wearing helmet cap. The first, the Birmingham offensive line. The fire will tell you that Carl Box has been their best offensive lineman this year. At the left guards by Joe Valerio, second round draft pick of the Kansas City Chiefs. And right now they need to block a little bit. Second down and 10 from the three. set in trouble and he is set for a safety Willie Wyatt and Dan Cilio the inside defensive tackles for Orlando combined for the safety and the Thunder score the game's first points well Mike that time had a quick drop as you see here wanted to get the ball off to the tight end fast there just wasn't anything there Three-step drop passes are good if you get it off fast, but if you don't, everything falls apart on you. Here you can see him. It's a three-step. He wants to throw it now. He doesn't throw it now. The pass blocking subconsciously thinks the ball's out of there, and Mike has just lost two points. It's not a great way to start your offense, giving away two points, but this is a patient and a solid Birmingham team. Do you know what, John? You go way back, and I've got to give those two points to Ray Criswell, the punter, who made an outstanding save of what was that's, very that's nearly right. a, a disastrous snap from center. Yep, and that's uh, in the game so often is decided by those yards that don't show up on the offense and defense. And the fact that the ball was downed inside the three also set that up. So the game's first points go to the Thunder. And now Birmingham will put it in play with a free kick from the 20. Kirk Maggio will punt the ball. And uh, Joe Howard Johnson and Grant his bell are the deep backs for Orlando. And this will be Bell who will take it at the 35. And he crosses the 45, so Orlando gets two points and good field position for their second possession. 
Now, what Scott Mitchell has accomplished this year, John, is what many people, both inside the World League and observers, hoped this league would be, a developmental league for people like Scott Mitchell. Absolutely. If he, his experience here makes him that much more ready to come in and, and substitute for Marino or just to get the experience he needs that, you know, in, in 20 years when Marino stops playing, he might be ready. Then. Now three wide receivers for Orlando. And Michael Titley in the game is the tight end. Give us to Daryl Clack. There's a tough, tough Birmingham defense. The number one defense against the run in the world league. Okay, 20. 20, Scott, 20, 20. 2-0, 2-0. 2-0 two zero. Two zero is the call. That doesn't mean anything. Everybody looks at their wristband flush, to, flush. to translate what 2-0 means. Right, right. Play number 20. Flush. Uh, the requirement to play in this team is you both have to read, <laughs> and you have to have either good eyes or contact. Five oh. Five oh. <laughs> hot, hot. Second down and 12. a great catch by Joe Howard Johnson inside the Birmingham 40. Oh, that was a great catch. And he was strong. He was leaning out about as far as he could go to make that catch. There was pressure on, on Mitchell, but he just stood in there and got that ball off. A great throw. Joe Howard Johnson makes one of the, you know, just an outstanding catch. This is a, a stick -em catch. Mitchell steps up in there. Boom. Look at that. Extended as far as he can. That's, that's a nice throw. I've believed all along that, that Mitchell is an accurate thrower in the medium range and short range, and he gets rid of the ball fast. They have, they've only taken 10 sacks in the whole season. Look at that stretch. Oh, that's pretty right there. Look at that. And bring it down on the way down. That looks that looks like Clyde Drexler going in for a two, doesn't it? Well, Joe Howard Johnson, you can see he's been around. He played at uh, Notre Dame back in the mid-'80s. And, of course, he belongs to the Washington Redskins, but with a fellow named Desmond Howard headed there this year, there are some who wonder if Joe Howard Johnson's future may be with another NFL club. Well, Joe's just going to say, hey, Desmond, take that catch. <laughs> <laughs> Cunningham, Cunningham's the man hurt. It looks like his legs, and he's up and, and walking well. He'll be back in there. This is the outstanding Shoot. offensive Champ, lineman in Shoot. the league this year. Who going back? Who? Guy yeah, Rick Cunningham, the only unanimous choice of all 10 World League head coaches to the all-World League team, the only unanimous choice. There's no confusion as to what position he plays, is there? <laughs> Look at that. Look at that guy. 305 pounds. And Rick Cunningham played. He was a high draft pick of the Indianapolis Colts and played there. Another young man who hopes the World League will lead him back to the NFL. Inside handoff to Clack. And you better be careful when you spin around inside against that Birmingham defense because they'll tackle that strip that ball. Yeah, I think I think against Birmingham, uh, you got to run the football straight at them. When you run laterally, boy, they come off blocks and their secondary flies up and makes tackles. They have to run straight at them. And that was so far in this game, when they have, they've made some, had some success. A three-yard play on first down. We have 8.40 to go first quarter. Orlando leading two to nothing. Here comes a corner blitz, and the pass is to Joe Howard Johnson, but Birmingham covers it up. It'll be a very short game. Tracy Sanders made the tackle. Again, you, you get a look, Ted, at, the, at how quick that secondary and linebackers react to the ball. Again, the ball's thrown very accurately. It goes right in his stomach. It gives him a chance to run, but boy, he's, he's overwhelmed by a bunch of guys there. And those receivers aren't the biggest guys. They can't stand that all night. That play was only good for two yards. Now third down. And another nice catch. With a flag coming in late, Michael Titley, the tight end, made the catch. The spot is going to be very close to, but maybe a tad shy of the first they're, down. And there's a flag down as well. They're going to bring it back. They had an offensive lineman down there running a fast pattern. I don't know what he was doing, but he was down there a good seven or eight yards. Well, now he's the guy that's going to have to go back and have his contacts checked. Maybe he read the wrong play. Yeah, he could very well have been. Or he could have said, I, I thought you said tackle eligible. This Orlando system is intriguing, John, how they... They, they kind of circumvent all of this uh, what, what about, I, I know, technology. I, I'll tell you, you want to go 89 go then? No? Well, this man has been, uh, is voted the uh, coach of the year in this league. Galen Hall has got a very you know, bright line and Number is willing to take some risks with his offense. It's a dynamic offense, and it's fun to look at. A penalty against Orlando, but nonetheless a fine catch by Michael Titley. Oh, 
again. Whew. His receivers are making him look good so far. Great job. Mitchell's four for five, but his receivers five have helped. Five no, 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 16, no. now five receivers in the game, all split wide for the Thunder. Hot, hot. Oh, no, no. Rush. So Mitchell has a lot of time. And he throws it. And it's caught for a touchdown. Joe Howard Johnson. Mitchell came inches from crossing the line of scrimmage. He let that go, I think, at the last possible second. And it was good for six. And did he put that ball on a line and on the money? There wasn't much margin of error in this pass. He had to drill it. Watch him here. He starts to roll. Now watch this thing come. He's starting to run. Great job of faking kind of a sidearm shot right on the money. Wow, is that a pass? Now Tracy Bennett, the all-world league place kicker. Puts the extra point through, so the Thunder, the short passing team, hits the big play. Real, really a big play, and, and just a great throw. We'll watch it one more time as Scott Mitchell, can he throw the long ball? People question it. He does it here for six points and a 9-0 lead. Focals. I'm gonna look just like my father. My grandfather. Wait, nobody will notice the lines if I do some cool frames or something. This is not working. For those who refuse to be seen in bifocals, we offer the perfect disguise. Verilux No Line Bifocals. The vision you need, the look you want, none of the lines. Call for a Verilux professional near you. I'm Sally Sperling, president of Hair Club for Men. If you have thinning hair, then this new booklet is something you should have. If you call our toll-free number, we'll send you our new brochure, which contains information about various hair replacement methods, including what the FDA has to say about the drug minoxidil. Of course, you'll also learn about Hair Club's new non-surgical polyfuse method. Whether wet right out of the shower or blown dry before going out, it looks and feels natural, just like a part of you. Hair Club's new polyfuse method literally fuses top quality human hair to your own hair. Even when you feel it, feel around the perimeter of your head. I mean, you really cannot feel anything in your hair. It really gave me more ways to be able to do my hair, and I could do it in more of a 90s fashion. A new healthy head of hair can renew confidence and improve self-esteem. It may also bring out the best of who you are. So make sure you call our toll-free number to receive our new brochure. It's loaded with information so you can make the right choice for yourself. And by the way, I'm not only the heck of president, but I'm also a client. Seven strangers linked by a secret past, hunted by a madman bent on revenge. Ronnie McDowell, Deadly Game, Saturday at 2 1 Central. There you go. Scott Mitchell throwing the touchdown pass, and he just finished an interesting conversation with the man he replaced as the Orlando quarterback, Kerwin Bell. Actually, acting somewhat as an assistant coach helping you. Well, whenever you do something good, everybody wants to come over and give you help. It's when you do bad and you need help, nobody talks to you. Kicked down by Eddie Britton in the end zone for Birmingham. There's Kerwin Bell, who quarterbacked the Thunder here last year and played for Galen Hall at Florida. All right, let's find Michael Barkan. All right, with Joe Howard Johnson, talk to me about that last reception. You had your man all the way. Well, what it was, I had a middle read on, and uh, I thought I had him right on the middle read, and I saw, I looked up and saw Scott scrambling to my left, and the safety came over the top, so I broke out to the corner, and there wasn't nobody there. And, uh, Scott did what he could to get it there, and we scored. He had six touchdowns during the regular season. These guys bend but don't break, but you're breaking them so far. Well, you know, we just have to execute, and uh, that's what we didn't do in the first game. So right now, things are going our way, and we just hope we can keep it going. All right, Ted. Jim Bell now the running back. North Seth to throw it. He's going out deep. Long ball sails uh, and falls incomplete. Intended for Willie Boyer with that from Thomas on uh, this coverage for Orlando. There's the four-man front for the Thunder, and it was Cilio and Wyatt, the tackles, who combined for the safety in the first quarter. Rick Andrews is the man that anchors the linebacking core, and he's wearing helmet cam tonight. A very good secondary. Frank and Rogers, strong corners, and Todd Crum, former Big Ten standout at strong safety. Rick Andrews looks at the play, second and ten. 
Foot pitch to Jim Bell. And he's brought down after a gain of a couple. This is really a, an excellent job by Wayne Dixon coming off the block and getting it out there fast. Made an excellent play. Birmingham has to be careful now. They have to keep their poise and stay with their game plan. You get down nine points, and all of a sudden you, there's that there's that tendency to say, gosh, we got to make something happen. And Birmingham doesn't make things happen unless they get things in the kind of environment they like. 51, Billy, 51. Third down, eight. And a long eight. Well, they've got five receivers spread out here. Don't see Birmingham line up this way very often. Incomplete. I'll tell you, if Birmingham winds up third and eight like that, it's going to be a long night for them. Yeah, that's not their game. And, uh, and, and patience and confidence uh, is what they have to have, and they have proven over and over again this year that they can come back in games and just kind of keep playing. Okay, good. 91 out of the game. So three downs and out. Birmingham has only had five plays from scrimmage thus far. And now Kirk Maggio is in the punt. And Joe Howard Johnson is the single safety. Maggio, one of the best punters in the World League in each of its two seasons. Line drive kick here, though. This will be returnable. And he is going to go. Joe Howard Johnson, touchdown Orlando. a bad punt and Joe Howard Johnson made him pay for it. Absolutely. He gave him a chance to come up the field. Look at Joe Johnson, Howard Johnson running fast up the field, runs right by the coverage. That one was over almost as soon as he kicked it. You could almost see that happening. And an explosion by the Orlando Thunder in the first quarter. Tracy Bennett puts the point through. We still have 5.15 to go in the first. And the Thunder, which lost to Birmingham on kicking plays two weeks ago, has capitalized on two kicking plays to take a 16 to nothing lead. I couldn't just stand there and watch him shoot those people. The suspense. Where's Sean Miller? The mystery. He's never gonna let us go. The excitement based on the best-selling novel. Get down! Harrison Ford, Patriot Games, rated R. Games begin June 5th. It could start in your office, in your home, over lunch. But now, wherever heartburn starts, this is where it ends. Introducing new Maalox Heartburn Relief Formula. No ordinary antacid works like this one to put out heartburn. Sharp. What you need in copiers is... Sharp. Sharp. Sharp thinking about business. It gives you the award-winning Master Series, Sharp's most advanced high-speed, high-volume copying system. Sharp thinking about copiers. It's built into our full line of copiers to make your business more productive. Sharp. Sharp. More cost-efficient. It's made Sharp Copiers number one. Number one. In customer satisfaction. Sharp thinking about business. You know, you get into fitness, you're likely to get an athlete's foot. And it could get pretty tough. The irritating itch, the painful cracking, the burning. That's when you want a medicine that acts tough. Tough Actin Tenactin. Tenactin cures even the tough cases of athlete's foot fungus. And Tenactin's clinically proven. No wonder it's the antifungal most recommended by pharmacists. Got a tough case of athlete's foot? Get the medicine that acts tough. Tough Actin Tenactin. It's the first word on business. News your company needs to grow. Wake up to the world with First Business on USA. Weekday mornings at 6.30. Hey, Sue. We're in way. He's if called for Parkhead again. He must get, get this Michael one. back over there talking. He's had two touchdowns in the first 10 minutes. Well, he's accounted for 140 yards so far in this game. You'd say that's a pretty good start. And here's Orlando kicking off a 16 to nothing lead for the Thunder. Eddie Britton, he has game-breaking speed. And he is tripped up by Maurice Crum, 53, Miami of Florida product. 
And John, I think that the toughest thing for a Birmingham club that doesn't score points quickly right now is they have to realize it's still the first quarter. Absolutely, and just stay with the things there they can do. You know, you start trying to do things you're not very good at, and that's when the disaster really comes. If they can drive the football, get a touchdown somewhere along here uh, in this half, then they can get back in this game. But boy, they can't be in a hurry. And the problem with scoring points quickly for Birmingham, they, they were dead last in the World League in passing this year. Second in rushing, but last in passing. Elroy Harris goes inside. Of course, what the buyer would love to see here would be that good long play chewing up drive. Let's go find Michael now. With Arthur Head Hunter, he is the captain of the Bad Boys group. Arthur, what are you going to do? It's 16-0 here, and you're still in the first quarter. Oh, yeah, the game's early right now. You know, they got a good momentum started and got a couple big plays on us right now. But um, it's five, still five minutes left in the first quarter. We play all game, you know. Got to go out and play all game in this, in this league. You know, it's down to nuts and guts now. So we just got to go out and play hard, baby. Sounds like a lot of boys to come back. Sounds like a little trash talk, Ted. Back to you. It gets silenced a bit. Oh, that's a pick. And that could be six more. Touchdown, Malcolm Frank. Thirty-five yards, and Orlando has stunned Birmingham in the first quarter. Here you see a simple out. The corner kind of kind of crowds him. Frank is there. The ball's thrown late. That one's on the quarterback. The ball's thrown late. Again, the kind of thing that happens to a team like this. They start trying to do things they're not real good at, and that's the result. If it wasn't time to panic, it, it is now, I think. Well, Bennett's getting a pretty good workout here in the first quarter. Another high snap, and it's put down nicely by Criswell. And the point is kicked through to make it 23 to nothing. Orlando has scored two return touchdowns here in the first quarter. Introducing the hottest two-seater watercraft on the water, the Kawasaki Jet Ski Super Sport. With a sleek V-hull and a powerful 750 engine, the Super Sport is where you want to be. Kawasaki, let the good times roll. Kawasaki. This summer in Barcelona, 12 of our best men will be bound by a common past, a common goal, and a common thread. Champion is proud to have been chosen to make the uniform for America's team. Because we understand, too, it takes a little more to make a champion. Every shot is a blast of sound. The harder you hit it, the bigger the boom. Boom ball. Play it outside, play it inside. It's what excitement sounds like from Catacom. No question, the stamina of these fans may be severely tested tonight. They were here early and prepared in a most emotional way for this game tonight. Yeah, they were out there when we came about three hours before the game. They've been down in a few beers between then and now, and uh, when that adrenaline goes, they may be asleep by halftime. Chan Gailey hopes that his team is at 23 to nothing, Orlando. And Bennett drives this one about eight yards deep. Eddie Britton downs it. We're going to, during this series, listen to Chan Gailey on the Birmingham side. 10 personnel, 10, 10, 10 personnel. Well, we're seeing a coach okay. under as right, much pressure as you with, can uh, be. Uh, let's go with, uh, nope, all right, let's go with trips right, fix, 128 sweep. Yeah. Well, John, the team that, that doesn't make mistakes 
Orlando's offense has only scored seven of these 23 points. Yeah, they've, they've just had everything going their way. It's really an interesting time for a coach because he already has that feeling in the pit of his stomach, and he's got to convey a sense of, of confidence to everybody else, or at least calmness. Five receivers, now Steve Avery comes back. And Avery to the far side, he drops the ball with the play blown dead. And the play will go for no gain. Carl Dunbar out of LSU made the play for the Thunder. Second 10. This play goes laterally a long way. See Dunbar do a nice job of using his hands. That's the one of the key things a defender has to be able to do is use his hands, get off the block. You see him do that very well. Nice play. Six DBs now in for Orlando as they counter this wide open offensive look by the fire. There's the first big play for Orlando on their first first down. Kirk Kirkpatrick who played at Florida. For Galen Hall, the Orlando coach, that's 16 yards in a first down. Well, that's a start, and that's what this football team has to do. Just concentrate on each play. Don't look at the scoreboard unless it's absolutely necessary, and just keep going and, and hope you can get a rhythm back. Sweet Bear, 128 Bear. Okay, they're in a 4 1 again. Down! 250 to go, first Down! quarter. This is play action and incomplete. Ball thrown high. Eugene Rowell, who's just back off injured reserve, up high at the ball, glance off his fingertips. Injury covering defensively. Here's Chen Gelly again. I'm sorry. Orange right, strike 904Z. Strike 904Z. Uh, nine is. Orange right, strike 904Z. In patterns. Uh, strike the nine is a deep pattern. Zero is a, is a short hitch like, and four is a hook. We'll see which one of these people Mike is looking at. Looks like we may have a blitz coming here. Both linebackers sneak up. They're coming. And the quick pass goes out to Britton. And Eddie Britton tripped up. Nice tackle by Maurice Crum for Orlando. Well, that time they were coming, and they, they got the ball off OK. They just didn't make many yards. Left hot 985 switch under. Let's go. Orange left hot 985 switch under. Hot 985 switch under. Right? That's the pattern now. They, they're they're looking for about a six yard gain here. Switch under is uh, just a, a yeah. under under breaking pattern by one of the receivers. Five defensive backs for the Thunder. Again, Crum showing blitz. They come and the ball's ballooned out to the far side. And a flag is down, ball incomplete, but face guarding and interference will likely be the call here against Malcolm Frank. It was a nice job by the quarterback. He had a free uh, rusher coming at him. He put the ball up in the air where his receiver had a chance. And this is definitely pass interference here. There's a high ball. Boyer's going up for it. The receiver, I mean, the defensive back just knocks him down. That makes up for a little bit for him for Frank intercepting that ball and wanting for a touchdown. <laughs> But that's the first down for them. So Malcolm Frank, earlier in the quarter, ran one back for six. Now he'll get flagged. Pass interference, number 20 defense, 15 from the previous side. First and down. That's a World League rule defensive pass interference, 15 yards from the previous line of scrimmage. That didn't exactly make up for the other one, but it's, no. it started, started it going back that way. But John, wouldn't even three first points here for Birmingham? Absolutely. Just three points would be important, wouldn't it? Just to get the, you just get those bad vibes out of your system and get back to feeling that you're okay. Down. Set. Hey. Hut, hut. Hey, Wide open man. The ball's way overthrown. Intended for Kirk Patrick and a poorly thrown ball. Well, that was the tight end who went out in the flat and then up the field. And they just lost him. Again, they're probably surprising Orlando with some of the stuff they're doing because Orlando got ready he for the running it, game. He saw it. But okay, again, Mike, they have the problem. They're not uh, very good at this phase of the go game. With the orange left, hot 209, hot 209, dig post. 
Chan, if we yeah. get a first, you might want to do closer. Now, second and ten, Rick Andrews looking in. And you're absolutely right, Steve. Orlando, I'm sure, has never yeah. seen this look from Birmingham, <laughs> especially in the first quarter of a game. Robert Presbury who got in. Delaware State, big mitts up there to knock it down. Orlando's just simply coming with more people than uh, Birmingham can block, so the responsibility goes to the quarterback, get it off fast. Try not to hit the lineman in the head with the ball. I mean, you know, and, and uh, the guy's got a big, pretty big head. It's pretty hard to get around. But that's the problem that you have with those kind of So. The first quarter comes to an end, and it was all the pressure on Birmingham. Orlando, 23 to nothing. The Brooker boys are here on tour. What's been the highlight of your lake in the stop, Matt? I'd say this new honey barbecue chicken, Russ. Fried chicken glazed in a special sauce with a touch of honey. Get two pieces with baked beans, coleslaw, and a biscuit in a roundup meal for just $2.99. That was completely unsolicited. The two-piece honey barbecue roundup meal, just $2.99, or the eight-piece meal, just $9.99 for a limited time in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. Get down! From the producer of The Hunt for Red October. Mr. Kill knows who I did it all. Based on the best-selling novel. I didn't make this happen. He did. The suspense. We think he's left the country. The excitement. I will destroy you. The mystery. Where's Sean Miller? He's never gonna let us go, is he? In the summer's most explosive event. Come on! Harrison Ford. Patriot Games. The games begin June 5th. Rated R. This is not what you want in a shave. Now you've got the edge with six rich lubricants. For less irritation, you've got the edge. You were here. She has the traveler's checks here. Nah, that's no good. But this is new American Express traveler's checks for two. The first checks either of you can use. Don't leave home without them. Next week on USA, the World League season comes to a finish at World Bowl 92 to be held at Olympic Stadium in Montreal. The winner of this game will meet the winner of tomorrow's game between Barcelona and Sacramento. And you'll see it only on USA beginning at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, the World Bowl next Saturday night. And Michael Barkham will have an interesting look at Stade Olympique, the site of the World Bowl coming up at halftime. Of our game here tonight. Birmingham with third down and 10 from the Orlando 45. Well, that's something Norseth excels at. Easy, easy, easy. And he drew Dan Cilio off with that snap count. And that will gain five. Now, two weeks ago when these teams played in Birmingham, Birmingham had third and 10. And without running a play, they got a first down. Norseth twice did this. Number 71 defense, five yards, still third down. Well, we get a look at it here. You can look at Andrews trying to move in to, to place the blitz. He's looking at his lineman just jump right offside and say, no, man, not until he centers the ball. Norseth picked up seven yeah. first downs in ten games this year. Listen to his start. Now it's third and five, the big rush again. Pass off and a first down. Eugene Rowell with the catch. And the tackle by Ephraim Thomas. Well, that was a huge play for Birmingham because Orlando is testing them by blitzing. You know, they they pick up the blitz well here. They pick up Andrews, who's coming. It's the outside rusher on the other side. Here you see Andrews sneaking up, trying to get a head start, watching that ball. As soon as that ball step, go, boom. The guard steps right out and stops. Oh, that was a wonder. You could see Sean Wolf's eyes shifting as Absolutely. he saw Andrews Absolutely. move into position. That was, that was a wonderful. great look at what happens. That was wonderful. First down at the 33 of Orlando. H back is Avery, play fake. Will set the keeper, and that'll pick up five or six yards on first down. We have second down. 23 to nothing, the score, and the stat sheet pretty one-sided. The big number there, the return yards. Yeah, the return yards is uh, 
and, and just big plays, uh, big airs, big plays. Uh, the only stat that counts right now is that 23 on Orlando's side and zero on the other. But again, the other side's moving the football. They have to just concentrate on what they're doing and make this drive work. That's Pete Kuharczyk, defensive coach for Orlando, and he relays the defensive signals into Rick Andrews. Here's our helmet cam wearer. That was an eight-yard game by Norseth. Eddie Britton tackled forward, and that'll be a first down. Eddie Britton had a chance, had a chance to make something big happen there, but he kind of hesitated on that quick screen type thing. He had a chance to get up the field, and he just was a little slow. Watch him here. Watch him. The ball's right on the money. Watch him hesitate right in here. Not sure where he's going and uh, got tackled, but it's a first down. The one thing uh, that, that uh, Birmingham's going to have is four downs. You know, there's no sense of, you know, uh, they, they got to go. Now they're back right, in their go, running right, formation. Running back is Jim Bell. Oh, Norseth Bell. And Bell just gets the football. He'll take the loss. Norseth fell as he wheeled to make the pitch. Well, when that happens, it's usually an offensive lineman steps on the quarterback's feet as he tries to step out of there. Come on, Rich. Come on, Rich. I think if we if we get a look here, which we're going to, we'll see that the guard just steps right on. Look at his feet right there. See, though, that's the center who's just starting to pull. Steps on him. Quarterbacks sometimes have have black and blue toes by the end of the season. That's, that happens a surprising amount of times. Is there fault on that, John? No, I, you know it's the guard trying to get get out of there a little too soon at the center. Sometimes it's the quarterback for not getting his feet going. Long play on second down, and here's a little trickery. Norseth can't make the catch. Just off his fingertips as Glenn Rogers was bearing down on him and talking to him. Well, that was too bad because that it had a chance to be a big play. Again, you got people doing things they're not used to doing. Yeah. It's well conceived, but now you've got a Avery now trying to throw back. Let him too far and didn't put enough air on the ball. And Norsa probably saw that guy coming. Northrop got a got a sense of what the receiver feels now. You see his eyes, his eyes were yeah. right on the defensive back. Say, man, I like passing better than this catch. Yeah. Funny thing is Birmingham yeah. worked on that play yesterday, and Shane Gailey said he never dreamt he'd have to use it. Third and 14. And that'll be incomplete. For Patrick. The closest receiver to the play, Norseth pounded down by Winford Bryant. And they are going to make Mike Norseth pay for any passes he'll complete tonight. Well, what's happening now, when they get in that five wide receivers, they're going to an automatic defense where they're blitzing and they're just rushing one man more than they can block. I think Birmingham's going to have to bring a back back in the backfield to pick up that extra rusher because that just isn't working. Uh, Norseth may not live through this game if he keeps happening that way. Philip Doyle from 42. Trying to put Birmingham on the board. And he hooked it. Oh, frustration continues for the fire. They have a 12-play drive. They move the ball for the first time. And Doyle, the leading scorer amongst World League place kickers this year, misses from 42. Olympic divers do cannonballs. Why ask why? Try Bud Dry. It's dry brewed. To drink light, yet satisfy completely. When it comes to refreshment, oh. he was robbed. It's a perfect 10. How's that? Great. I like these the best. You got it. I always tell my customers, be sure to take your credit card receipts. I should have listened to myself. Whoa, Citibank for me? The other day I got a call from Citibank. Hello? Seems somebody charged some pretty fancy stuff on my card number. Citibank suspected fraud, but they said I wouldn't be responsible for the charges. I've seen Citibank look out for my customers. Seems they're also looking out for me. Not just Visa, Citibank Visa. Did I forget to invite you to the pool party? Well, maybe next year. On those occasions when you need to make a big splash, there's the Super Soaker 100. It has a powerful air pressure system. Oh, Buffy! A range 
of up to 60 feet. And a drenching spray. The Super Soaker 100. It's a water gun of a higher caliber. Also the 50, or the ultimate, the 200. Well, tonight the talk is being done by the Lime Green guys so far. Yeah, they, they really get a sense that they're rested and full of energy, and, uh, you know, obviously they've had it all their way so far. Orlando has not run a play from scrimmage in almost 11 minutes, but they lead the game by 23 points. And someday I'm going to get the stat police on that. I think time of possession is one of the most deceiving statistics in sport. There's Roger Vick running it for the first time. The one-time New York Jets stand out. Pushes near the 35, Michael Barkan. With Mike Westoff, Miami Dolphins special teams coach, you're looking at all four kickers on both teams here, and you've got two good ones in Miami. Why? Right. First of all, we just want to, well, Reggie Roby's coming off of an injury, and we want to make sure we have the very best possible person in camp, just in case he has problems or just to back us up. And then also there's a competition factor. We've done this in the past. We've had very, very good kickers, and we create competitive situations, and it's worked for us. Now, Scott Mitchell says he wants to be the number two quarterback, and last year he was number three, many said, because he couldn't hold uh, for Stojanovic. What will happen in that regard? not so much that he can hold, because he certainly can. But the fact that we had a combination going with Scott Seacules, then that, that led to us just to keep him with Pete. And it will we'll let it open for grabs and competition and compete this year. All right, Mike, thanks a lot. Ted? No catch there. That's Chris Ford, and he did not get the second foot down. Right in front of the Orlando bench. The pass is rolled incomplete, and that will bring Orlando into punt. Well, here we get a look at a great throw in a, a pattern where he throws it right in between the zones. The receiver got spun around a little bit, lost his balance, and that foot just swung out of bounds. That was a nice throw by Scott. It was right in the middle between the between the zones. And uh, you got blast, Jack. So here is Ray Criswell to punt. George Christ, who is an assistant coach for the Chicago Bears, signed last week to be the new long snapper for the Thunder. We got blue. We got blue. Set. And somebody jumped there. Kick is away. James Henry deep. And Henry's in a lot of trouble. And is brought down. And it was Chris that got all the way down there to make the tackle. And Ted, there are nights like this. This was fourth down and three, so that offside is going to give him a first down. Wow. That's there right. Are, there are days you should have just stayed home, you know. <laughs> Fire the bus hand. driver. Should never have yeah. picked us up, right? That's right. There it is, fourth and three, and the offside will give Orlando a first down. Again, put yourself in the in the body or the mind or the feelings of the Birmingham team. You know what it's like to have that feeling offside. in your stomach. Number 26 defense, five yards, first down. It's like playing golf and hitting your first three shots in the lake. It's hard to keep playing. And in, in the normal rhythm and the normal enthusiasm you need just isn't there, and it's uh, hard to get it. One of the responsibilities of the coach, but Chan has to fight that all his, those feelings off in his own, in his own being. And all they can do is helplessly watch as Orlando gets the ball back. First down from their 38-yard line. Inside give to Clack. Two, and he gets two, about two, three yards. Two. You know, Yogi Berra gets laughed at a lot for his uh, wisdom, but he said one line that really applies here to Chan Gailey. He says, you know, sometimes it gets late early. Well, it's doing that right now for Birmingham. Mitchell keeps the feet moving. And now throws it short of Granis Bell. Scott Mitchell is a big kid and doesn't look like he would be very good on the move, but he is excellent on the move. He can kind of shuffle as he does there. Three, keep, three. Keep his hips pointed down the field so he can throw the football. He didn't find anybody, but boy, he sure got everything he could out of that play. Lisa Mo. Lisa, Lisa. The signals coming Lisa. In from Pete Hurt. Five all, -oh, five all. -oh. It's third and seven. Four-man rush. And it's incomplete and a flag down. And 
Antonio Gibson was the defender on the play for Birmingham and a flag thrown. The ball is thrown late, but it's thrown so late that the defensive back gets there a little early and, and causes a pass interference. Again, now that's a that's a big error on a part of the safe safety man. He's running over there. He should have had his eyes on the football. He could have intercepted that ball. He had a really easy play on it, but he never saw it. Yeah, it could have easily been an interception, and it's just again the fundamental of a safety man seeing the ball, seeing the quarterback throw the ball, is where that play uh, went awry for Birmingham. So two first downs by penalty for Orlando on this drive. Clack takes it to the 41. And after taking a couple of weeks where their play was lackluster, having already wrapped up the division, Galen Hall made sure whatever he did worked tonight. Yes, and they, they're an outstanding looking team. And you take one of these teams that have dynamic offensive ability and you get them going good. Boy, they're frightening. Here comes the blitz. <laughs> Mitchell gets away. Now we'll buy some time and go as a man wide open. Touchdown to Willie Davis. Wow. Well, you hit it, John. Mitchell got away from Arthur Hunter on the safety blitz, and then he had all the time in the world. And you know what he does really well when he starts. Willie Davis played at Central Arkansas. And that was just his second touchdown catch of this year. 41 yards from Mitchell. That was a drive kept alive twice by penalties on Birmingham. It gave the Thunder first down. So this ball dribbled ahead and uh, the play is blown dead. I, I think he kicked the ball before the referee signaled the ball ready for play. Okay, Tom White. Is the boss here? We'll find out. Number three down. We can yeah. stay lit, right? Because they're when they're in trouble now, they're gonna do that. There is no kickoff. The ball fell off the tee. We blew the whistle to kill the play before he kicked it. We'll reset it. Please reset the stadium clock to seven minutes, 28 seconds. Ah, I wonder it was a funny looking kick. Well. He did, great, he did a able. great job to hit that the way he did. Well, they should be able. These guys played soccer all their lives. You know, they're not football. <laughs> they're soccer players. Yeah, they, they should be able. They should have to dribble it and kick it. You know? Did you ever talk to kickers when you were coaching? Did you talk to your kickers? Uh, no, I, I introduced myself and this. You know, yeah, sure you do. Sure you do. And I, I think it's important that as a that, that the kicker be incorporated in the team. The best kickers Joe always ran are. To the flat on the hot route, so I just stepped my it's amazing when quarterbacks make big plays or anybody makes a big play, they love to explain it to you after. <laughs> Say, yeah, I saw this, and the guy wiggled his left ear, and so I threw it to the right side. Well, we may be here a while as they try to get the stadium clock reset to the proper time. I don't think it, it that, matters. That, that, well, if you, see what, if you saw that time, 72 minutes and 80 seconds, I think it's going to feel like that to Chan Gailey in Birmingham. Well, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I have really been impressed with Scott Mitchell, uh, the progress he's made through this year. Mm. Do you think he'll go back to Miami instead of saying, I want to be second string quarterback? He, you don't think he's going to go back and say, maybe I ought to be first? No. Mm. Uh, Dan Marino Our friend is uh, Dan Marino, yeah. yeah. Scott will know better than that, huh? Now Bennett gets a good kick away. This will be a chance for Eddie Britton to run one out. He's brought down the near side. Boy, a nice special teams tackle there by Joe Howard Johnson, who's doing everything in this first half tonight, almost as much as Michael Barkett. Can't do enough, though, Ted. The buses in Orlando this spring tinged with that lime green. One for every win that the Thunder has. There are nine because they've won nine, including the tiebreaker game preseason. But th if this game keeps going the way it's been, they're going to have ten buses going around. Take me to the Omni, please. <laughs> Another fair cheater. Did you notice that? I didn't know they had ten buses in Orlando. <laughs> Chan Gailey's telling Mike Norseth, you know, we can get 29 points here in this quarter. Oh, no, he's coming back. So are we. They wouldn't take me.
There's only one place on earth, one place where you'll find laughs and thrills and great music for every member of your family. Opryland, USA. For all we have to see and do, call today. They're tiny portraits of a people with personalities as varied as our own. They sing of our heroes, echo with our history. There are as many reasons to love stamps as there are people who love them. These are stamps worth saving. Ask for the space stamps at your post office now. At the first tickly itch of athlete's foot, Desinex, do not stall. Desinex intercepts athlete's foot before it turns ugly. Killing those grungy fungi before they get cracking and burning. All you hard chargers, Desinex knows you. Stall no longer, please. There's a can at the store with your salvation in it. Come get it, or else don't blame Desinex. Strike. Counter-Strike. An all-new season on USA, Saturday at 6. At the Citrus Bowl in Orlando with John Robinson and Michael Barkan and our outstanding production crew on USA Network, Ted Robinson. And uh, Orlando leading 29 to nothing. This has been a big deal. The World League is focused fervently on this game the last two weeks. Jerry Venisi of the World League has been here trying to drum up more interest in Orlando. And they've got a nice crowd, an enthusiastic crowd tonight. This is 42 people looking for all season. And they've got it, man. They're putting on a great show for them. Our set is struggling. Complete to Elroy Harrison. He is now four out of 12. Well, it's uh, again, that's, it's that thing of having to do things that you're just not comfortable with. Birmingham's given up more points in a quarter and a half tonight than they have in any game in their two year history. Four man rush. And the pass incomplete. Intended for Boyer, who last week caught 13 passes in Ohio. Single game record. I can't get the wheel call when they got zero. Okay, Mike, let's go with uh, orange left, hot 628, wheel switch. So one thing, John, Chen Gailey's composure has well, been very impressive during this. Well, he's, he's doing everything he can to try to establish some sort of a rhythm. Again, he's got that five receivers, no backs. Third down and 10. Up the sideline, line drive pass off the fingertips of Kirkpatrick. Kevin Gibbry covering for Orlando, so three downs and out. And the Fires punt team back on the field. Well, again, you know, ball's just off fingertips. Again, that's a tight end running up the field just with, without the kind of ability to stretch out and make that kind of play. And so the ball ticks off his fingertips. I think if I were Chan, I'd kind of go back to a normal offense and just see if he could if he gets one more chance in this half, see if he can punch one in. Yeah, we'll get into that Sean Moore in a moment. That's one of the more intriguing stories of this World League season. Maggio almost had that blocked. It may have been partially tipped. The ball does get a, a better roll for Birmingham and will trickle down inside the 45-yard line of Orlando. But still great field position for the Thunder to start in a first half that has belonged to them. Air reservations. How can I help you? Hi, who are you? Two to Washington, please. After you. Here you are, sir. Thanks. You're traveling light. Did you have fun flying? Yeah. You enjoy your flight with USA. Now going to Orlando. Thank you for flying on USA. You'll hear one word again and again from the people of USA. What's better for you? For one very good reason. Everything we do. do USA. You go to gate ten. Thanks very much. Introducing Tire Foam from Armorall. One spray, and even old tires look great. 
Kind of makes you wish we made car foam, doesn't it? New tire foam from Armor All. Just spray, walk away. with the ball and field position has been such a dramatic difference in this game. The Thunder starting from their 45 here. Birmingham's best starting point has been its own 22 yard line. Okay, okay, hut. And Mitchell gives the ball inside to Darrell Clack who drives it across midfield. Must have lost a bet somewhere. Ahead to <laughs> okay, okay. Hut. Second down and four, and Clack got hit behind the line there. Brought down for a loss. Tony Bowick back in the game after an early injury tonight. So is Rick Cunningham, by the way, who was hurt early in the game for uh, Orlando. He's back on their offensive line as well. Thunder trying to go again with the no huddle on third down and six. Hot, hot. And here comes another blitz. Mitchell gets it away, and this is picked by Junior Jackson. Looking for a lateral. No help, though. The Birmingham nonetheless gets the ball on the turnover inside the Orlando 40. A personal foul now. Did it occur before or after the interception? That's the question. I think if it's on the quarterback, it's going to be. It's the ball's going to come back. It's going to be. Okay. It'll be uh, Orlando's ball. Wow. Otis Moore, the man that may have been the offender. You think uh, uh, Coach Bell out of uh, to climb this penalty foul. just to make the game competitive? The passer, number 71 defense a floater. Well, we'll see. We'll get a look at it. You know, I'm not. I, I would. Technically, that's a correct call. Uh, he did strike him in the face, but it's so hard for a, a, a lineman rushing the passer, trying to get his hands up to defend against the pass, to try to block the pass. His hands just go in in that direction. Here, by the book, that that is. But, Sometimes the book needs to be replaced by some common sense. You know, part Liz, more than hit the quarterback were his hands. Well, it's, I think he had to make that call. Hot, hot. <laughs> Going for the big strike. Oh, right through the hands of Grannis Bell. Wow, Mitchell put that right on the money. Yeah, and it was a line shot. He was running out of room in the back of the end zone. So he put more drive on that football, more like a two iron rather than a much, uh, you know, air under the ball. And watch this ball come hard in there. He should have made this catch. That ball did come with some real speed on it. Well, that's right. You see, you that ball did, he never oh. got his hands on it. It hit him in the wrist. And your fingers and your hands have to make first contact five with the ball if you're going to catch right. it. No, white corner. Four wideouts, second and ten. Mitchell you sees a hot. blitz coming. Gosh. And they run out of time. Mitchell saw a blitz coming. He was trying to adjust, and Orlando ran out of time, so they'll lose yeah. five yards. No, you're not. No. He was confused from the beginning. Uh, they were trying to talk to each other during that play. Time just ran out on All you have to do is move Darrow up in that gap and go. Yeah, we shouldn't have to say anything. Darrow should move up and let's go. Here we go. Orlando regrouping. We'll be back in a moment. This year, the Lake Edna players present the Wild West Review. Tonight, director Lauren Clark tried to motivate her cast of cowboys with new KFC Honey Barbecue Chicken. Fried chicken glazed in a special sauce with a touch of honey. The chicken was unbelievable, as were a few of the performances. Try the two-piece Honey Barbecue Roundup meal, just $2.99, or the eight-piece meal, just $9.99, for a limited time in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. And Orlando just hitting another big pass play. 19 yards from Mitchell to Joe Howard Johnson. Good catch for Howard Johnson. First down, 22-yard line. Inside, it's Clack. And 
and right now Orlando's able to get a few more yards inside than you would expect against that Birmingham defense. Well, they've got them spread out now, and they've got them back on their heels. Uh, There's not enough to establish an offense running inside, but it certainly keeps them honest. They're moving down for more points, and, and more importantly, using up most of this half. Read, 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 read. Down to three and a half minutes in the half. John Brantley, all World League backer. He's the quarterback okay. of defense. Okay. Hut. Darryl Flack runs it inside, and that'll be first and goal for Orlando. James Henry on the tackle. Orlando's coming off the ball and just giving the, the runner about an extra two feet from where, where he can make the nice cutback run. Hey John, in, caught up in all of the hoopla of Orlando's passing game, people forget they have the two most experienced NFL running backs in the league in Clack and Vic. And they use them uh, in tandem uh, pretty well. First and goal, seven yard line. <laughs> Darrell Clack punches it down inside the five. Oh, that is a lonely spot. Chan Gailey stands in right now. He's got to feel like the spotlight's all on him. Yeah, and as this game goes on, you'll notice there won't be anybody standing next to him either. They all start disappearing from around 54, 54. Three rip. Three rip. Three rip. Three. Roger Vick inside. It's going to be down just shy of the goal line. Well, they're making that consistent game. It's the backside of the Birmingham defense that isn't closing down fast enough to stop that cutback run. Every time he's run the football, uh, he's made that cutback, and it's uh, that gets us to two minutes to play in the first half. Orlando punishing the fire right ahead to the lead. Lightning blade actually make your job as easy as this? Well, lightning stays sharp longer, cuts easier than the blade you're using, or your money back. Where can you use the Players Club card? Las Vegas, Atlantic City, the Caribbean, on cruise ships. Sometimes you just need to get away from it, all right? But these days, you gotta be smart about it. With a Players Club card, you save 25, 50% off your room. 25% off food and drinks, up to 50% off shows. The Players Club card. Have some fun the smart way. New members get two free nights in Las Vegas or Atlantic City when the club books their flights. Call toll-free right now. There's no obligation. To me, when a woman sweats, it just isn't sexy. Of course a guy's going to sweat sometimes, but when you're close... Who wants a guy that smells? Get closer with Arid Extra Extra Dry, the anti-odor antiperspirant. I trust Arid. This is not what you want in a shave. Now you've got the edge with six rich lubricants for less irritation. You've got the edge. The Orlando Thunder just inches away from adding to an already imposing lead that they put on in the first half of a playoff game and nobody on that sideline could ever have anticipated this happening in a playoff game. No, and it's, uh, again, though, two, two big plays at the start of the game. The, the big pass and then the, the punt return really pretty much decided. Oh, there's a good play by the Birmingham defense. They stop Vic on third down and goal. Arthur Hunter leading the surge and it was a goal line stand by Birmingham last week that helped save their playoff clinching win at Ohio. Here's the uh, helmet cam Arthur Hunter coming off the corner. Nobody blocks him. Makes an excellent tackle. You see how you could see with the camera right into the man's hip. That's the way you're supposed to tackle. And now Tracy Bennett on fourth down trying a 19 yard field goal. Birmingham blocked one of these in the fourth quarter last week. But not there. Hey. So Bennett puts it through for 19 yards. Tacking three on to the lead. And it's now 32 to nothing. You know, John, I imagine that right now you 
I'm pretty darn happy you're not coaching anymore because I imagine you can identify greatly with what Chad Gailey and his coaches are experiencing. Yeah, and you know, and the worst thing, uh, just the simple things that you normally are so confident about begin to fail you. You, you get so you can't get out of your own way, but it's a, it's a terrible feeling, particularly in such an important game. This is the biggest game of the year. These people have done a great job to get in the playoffs, and they find themselves uh, uh, just unable to compete tonight. Uh, if they played this game again tomorrow night, it'd probably be a very close game, but <laughs> it's certainly not at the moment. You know, John, we took a look earlier at Sean Moore. Now we saw Mike, we've seen Mike Norseth quarterback for Birmingham all year. Sean Moore was the runner up for the Heisman Trophy two years ago in Virginia. The Denver Broncos sent him to the World League specifically to play for Chan Gailey here in Birmingham in the hopes that he would get needed experience to perhaps be the backup to John Elway. He's taken one snap from center all year. I mean, you don't know what Shane Gailey's thinking, but could you ever conceive of a scenario whereby they may turn to him tonight? Well, uh, you know, it really wouldn't be fair. He's not prepared. Uh, he has, you know, he hasn't had the opportunity to play, so, you know, it's putting him in a position that's pretty negative for him. Not that anybody in the game isn't in a pretty negative position right now. And he Brenton will be out across the 30. And that's the in incredible contrast between Mitchell, who's gained the needed experience and played so well for Orlando, and Sean Moore, who has not been able to play for Birmingham. On Tuesday, Kirk Douglas tries to rescue his psychic son from The Fury. Andrew Stevens co-stars in the USA movie The Fury, Tuesday night at 9 Eastern, 8 Central on USA. Now Birmingham starting from their 31 now. 116 to play in the half. They have all three timeouts. Yeah. And the fire continues in that five receiver alignment. Underneath hit. And he Britton bumped once and then finished off at the 32. And the play is good for a yard. And Dean Witkowski out of North Dakota. Let's go with orange right, hot 269 fin flat. 269 fin Eddie. flat! Other 269, side. 269, 269, Billy. 269. Yeah. Down. Chan Gailey still coaching. 50. He's got to do some coaching at halftime. Ten. Trying to keep 36 guys awake and alert and inspired. Norseth's awake. Oh, nice job. He turns a big loss into a gain of four. Well, that was a great job by Mike. Give, keeping, his, keeping his people alive. Uh, Birmingham timeout, 35 seconds as they try to get on the board before halftime. Welcome back to Sega Sports. David Robinson's revolutionizing the game with 24 new digitized moves. He says, give me the rock, baby. David Robinson's Supreme Court basketball from Sega Genesis. David's a glass eater. Wow. Dipsy dude, Dunkaroo. David's been sensational. Let's go to the locker room. David, is it really true yes, that you're... Yes, it's true. I'm digitized. David's awesome, baby, with a capital A. Think fast. Boxing's up next. Watching his team. He may turn to John Robinson for a little inspiration at halftime. Of course, we have a third down play coming up here for Birmingham. Third down and three. And Norseth goes deep to Eddie Britton. And Britton winds up having to break up a potential interception by Malcolm Frank. And that'll bring up fourth down now for the fire. Well, it's a, you know, it's a terrible thing to do now. He's got to, I think he's got to go for it on fourth down, but if he doesn't make it and he is going for it, there's that risk that they can put another another seven points on the scoreboard yeah, going the other way. What difference does that make now? Absolutely. They he's got to do something to get this right. thing turned around a little bit. He needs to act. 38-yard line, fourth down. They need three. 28 seconds in the half. Orlando had to take time out. They were confused about uh, personnel. Orlando, that's their first charge timeout. 40 second timeout. I was going to say, John, that uh, you were an assistant coach at USC in 1974, playing your arch rivals from Notre Dame. You, your team was down 24 nothing. I think about a minute before halftime. That's right, and and 
uh, and, and not too different a set of circumstances than this. We we snuck a touchdown in, and then at halftime, uh, John McKay said, "We, we got to make something happen here." Anthony Davis ran the kickoff back in the second half for a touchdown, and we scored 55 straight points. So it's something has to do, happen to spark you when you're this far down, and uh, certainly that was a memorable game. Not for the Fighting Irish, nope. however. Anthony Davis that scored six touchdowns that day. Era Parsegian's last game. I, th I think that might have been the last time USC beat Notre Dame, John. No, it? that is not true, Ted. <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> and you know that's not true. <laughs> down! Fourth down. Fourth down. Fourth down. It's a long hot, three. Hot. Seth was trying to draw him off, and instead he quick kicks the ball. Well, he tried to draw them offside when that didn't work. He quick kicks the ball down inside the 10 yard line. Now Birmingham trying to tackle the football away and brought down Mike Nettles inside the 10. Well, that was a very well done play and a, and a great kick. Uh, I don't think it's going to net them much. Uh, Orlando will be happy to just to sit on the ball and go in at halftime uh, 32 nothing, which is pretty tough. Now coming up, our Budweiser Halftime Report features Mike Barkan with an insightful look at how Olympic Stadium in Montreal prepares for next week's visit for World Bowl. That's the highlights of the first half. Not many of which will please the Birmingham fans. Mike Norseth was having a little words, uh, choice words with one of the Orlando defenders on his way off the field. <laughs> Deal with the football in the World League. You have to move it forward. So Mitchell takes the snap and goes ahead to gain a couple. But that will end the first half. And the Orlando Thunder go to their locker room right into the face of their fans. No, no not yet. Not yet. We have a timeout taken at five seconds. Birmingham, one of the defenders, called a timeout. You see Chan Gailey's reaction to that. Well, every once in a while, that's what defensive linemen do. They they jump up and say, oh, my God, got to take a timeout. That's why they're defensive linemen <laughs> for those kind of decisions. But well, what is this feeling going to be like in the Birmingham locker room? How is Chan Gailey trying to keep these people inspired? Well, I don't think they're, they're definitely not inspired now, so it's not a question of keeping them inspired. You know, I think the biggest thing you have to do is, first of all, get everybody to relax. You know, everybody there is jittery. Or there's a depression-type feeling. When things are going bad, it's the jitters that hit you first. You get nervous, and you get that feeling in the pit of your stomach. Almost to have a sense of relaxation and say, hey, gang, you know, let's just have some fun and go out here and see if we can get something to happen. Obviously a pretty tough task. Uh, well, a great response from the Orlando fans. A very classy man, Chan Gailey, now with Mike Barkan. Chan, what are you going to do second half? Because you guys, 32 to nothing, that's a that's a tough lead to overcome. Yeah, it is. But if they score 32, we can score 32. You know, that's what I'm going to go tell the team. You know, I, I don't like it. We botched everything you can botch in the first half. We got to go try to regroup. And uh, I can't let them die. That's my job. They look beat right now. Boy. Can you can you breathe that fire into them? I doubt they'll quit. I, I don't believe they will. Any chance of seeing Sean Moore in their second half? Uh, that'll have to be determined later on. All right. Thanks, Chan. Ted? Chan Gailey, the Birmingham coach. Very, very classy yeah. man to stop and talk at a difficult time. Absolutely. And, and you see what... You see what greatness in coaching is. Sometimes it's handling the negative as well as be handling the positive. There's a man with a lot of class and a man who knows how to coach this game. We'll be back with our Budweiser halftime report from Orlando in just a moment. Instantly, nothing works like Polaroid. Here's highlights from the Fleer NBA Championship game. Mitchell spins to Charles Smith. He's airborne and jams it from three-point land. Alley up to Bowie, over to Allison, a monster dunk. Fleer, a game in every pack.
Capture all the excitement of Fleer NBA basketball cards with Fleer's new starter set. This one-of-a-kind collector's tin is filled with 15 packs of cards, and it can be yours for only $10.99. To order, call 1-800-848-9000. This quality adjustable bed costs 50% less than these three quality flatbeds. 50% less. Yet Craftmatic offers these advantages over flatbeds. First, it adjusts electrically at the touch of a button. So you can read in bed, watch TV in bed, snack, chat on the phone, do a crossword puzzle, and relax and sleep in wonderful comfort. Plus, if you suffer from low back pain or edema or swelling of the legs, Unlike any ordinary flatbed, an adjustable bed may temporarily provide relief. Call toll-free to receive this free adjustable bed catalog by mail. Get the facts about the adjustable bed that costs 50% less than all three of these quality flatbeds. 50% less. Call for your free catalog now. Call toll-free 1-800-231-6600. That's 1-800-231-6600. Call toll-free 1-800-231-6600. Budweiser Halftime Report is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. With that clean, crisp, cold taste, nothing beats a bud. A lot of folks here in Orlando starting to get their passports ready for a trip to Montreal. The winner of this game heads to Olympic Stadium for next week's World Bowl. Our Michael Barkett had a chance to visit Montreal this week and check up on preparations for the game. London's Wembley Stadium, site of World Bowl 91. The World League's inaugural championship proved a resounding success as more than 61,000 fans watched the London Monarchs emerge victorious. This year, World Bowl 92 travels to Montreal, Canada, an international city with a European flair and home to the Olympic Stadium. Montreal hosted the 76 Olympics. It's had other huge events here. Uh, they know how to put on uh, world-scale events. And it's only an hour flight from New York City. Most people aren't, aren't aware of that. So uh, it really has a European flair, and that's one of the important criteria we had in selecting it. Back in 1976, Montreal played host to the world in the Summer Olympic Games. But if you'll remember, Stade Olympique not quite ready when the athletes came to town. Well, the World Bowl organizers hope to avoid the same fate when their showcase game comes to Olympic Stadium next Saturday night. Come on inside, I'll show you what I mean. This is the dugout for the Montreal Expos, and that is the problem in our story. Baseball. Right now they're setting up for a Genesis concert here at the stadium, but the night before the World Bowl, the Expos play a home game, not just one, a twinite doubleheader. And it's going to take some time for them to turn the stadium from baseball to football. But there's one man who says he can do it. The man behind this promise, Real Desjardins, of the new Montreal machine. Now, what's the biggest problem that you have to contend with to set up for the World Bowl? I think uh, we end up with a a very tight schedule to pass from a baseball configuration to a football conf configuration. Everybody is scheduled to, to work starting at 11 o'clock at night, so uh, I had to finish uh, two uh, the next day at, uh, at uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. This conversion may sound simple, but the seemingly endless list of tasks under normal circumstances takes close to 17 hours to complete. For Real's team, the pressure will most certainly be on. Two-minute offense, and Real's got to get the ball in the end zone. I mean, what kind of a player is he? What kind of a team does he bring to the field? Well, he's a general out there, and he can really take, take it in when it counts, and there's no questioning his ability to react and respond under pressure. How do you feel before going into a situation like well, this? Well, we have dedicated personnel, and uh, I'm sure that they will, uh, they will work harder to, to make sure that uh, we, we end up with the best situation as possible. You sure you're not nervous? <laughs> <laughs> the 
Well, the World League, Montreal, and Real are all confident that it can and will be done. Let's just hope the Expos don't go extra innings. We never miss an opening here. World Bowl 92. We'll see you next Saturday night right here on USA Network. Shark. What you need. Shark. What you need in business today is. Shark. Shark thinking about business. It gives you the world's first desktop. Color facts. Color facts. Shark. Shark. And high resolution VGA notebook computers that fit in your briefcase. Shark. Shark thinking. It created the high performance master series copier and our most powerful wizard electronic organizer. Shark thinking. To be innovative in business, you need. Shark thinking about business. There's only one place on earth, one place where you'll find laughs and thrills and great music for every member of your family. Opryland, USA. For all we have to see and do, call today. This summer in Barcelona, 12 of our best men will be bound by a common past, a common goal, and a common thread. Champion is proud to have been chosen to make the uniform for America's team. Because we understand, too, it takes a little more to make a champion. What? You gotta be kidding me! Have you ever wanted to call the play? Well, now's your chance because you're the coach. Play the game. Make the big call. Be the game-winning coach. Call now. You can show the coaches how to do it. Use your best strategy to win the big game. You call the play. Now that's how to call a play. If you know football, call 1-900-773-2255. 269 per minute, adults only. Orlando leading 32-0. At the half, and there was a great tradition in golf called a mulligan, and I'm sure Chan Gailey, about three minutes into this game, was hoping he wow. could have called and taken that mulligan right Ab up the Absolutely. Bat. You just don't expect that kind of thing to happen. And once it starts happening, it's hard to get it stopped. And, and again, it, it, the worst thing for Birmingham is they can't play in this kind of a game. They need the game close and tight, and uh, they just can't score points quickly. It began with a punt that Orlando downed inside the five, and Norseth tried to throw a pass out of the end zone and paid the price. Again, he, he didn't have anybody open, and the protection fell apart, and uh, boom, they're down 2 nothing, and it's going to get a lot worse very fast. And Cilio and Willie Wyatt combined. Orlando took the free kick, moved into Birmingham territory, and Mitchell went deep. Well, you, you see uh, Scott Mitchell scrambling. Watch him fake the run, then throw, and he throws with about six inches behind the line of scrimmage on the run, kind of sidearm, with great accuracy to Joe Howard Johnson, who had about as good a half of football as you could possibly have. That made it 9-0. Birmingham went three downs and out, and a low line drive punt by Kirk Maggio cost Birmingham. And, yeah, it was, uh, it was a very low. You can see Johnson coming up the field immediately, going right past the Birmingham coverage. Now he's loose in the secondary. And those were two touchdowns within about two minutes by Howard Johnson that made it 16 to nothing. And, and here was really the backbreaker. They throw a simple out pattern. Frank, the cornerback, reads it. The ball's a little late in coming, and he steps in and makes the interception and is off for the touchdown. You get the feeling that the Orlando players are just playing faster and harder than the Birmingham players. Everything a step faster. Birmingham missed a 42-yard field goal. The Thunder come back down the field, and Mitchell makes a great scramble. Here. You know, and they got a blitz on, and, a, and Hunter comes free and has got him, but Mitchell again steps around, scrambles, keeps his eye down the field, hits Willie Davis for a touchdown again. All right, now what, if anything, can Orlando try to do here to reverse this? <laughs> I don't know what they're going to do, but you got to look at Chan Galley trying to do a great job uh, of keeping alive, keeping the belief that his football team can come back. The first thing I think they have to do is just relax at halftime, not play with a worried look on their face, hope something good happens early, get them going again. All right, well, we'll see how evangelical Chan Gailey really was at halftime. When we come back, the second half is next from Orlando on USA. Get down! To save 
save his family. Sean Miller escaped. Jack Ryan must play a deadly game. I don't care what you have to do. You just get him. Harrison Ford. Patriot Games. Rated R. The games begin June 5th. You are here. He has the traveler's checks here. That is the problem. Well, was. Now there's American Express Traveler's Checks for two. The first checks either of you can use. Don't leave home without them. This quality adjustable bed costs 50% less than these three quality flatbeds. 50% less. Yet Craftmatic offers these advantages over flatbeds. First, it adjusts electrically at the touch of a button. So you can read in bed, watch TV in bed, snack, chat on the phone, do a crossword puzzle, and relax and sleep in wonderful comfort. Plus, if you suffer from low back pain or edema or swelling of the legs, unlike any ordinary flatbed, an adjustable bed may temporarily provide relief. Call toll-free to receive this free adjustable bed catalog by mail. Get the facts about the adjustable bed that costs 50% less than all three of these quality flatbeds. 50% less. Call for your free catalog now. Call toll-free 1-800-231-6600. That's 1-800-231-6600. Call toll-free 1-800-231-6600. Budweiser Halftime Report has been brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, with that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a bud. Well, you know what, John? Your prediction did not come through. They're still awake here. Yeah, the they second are half starts. they're enjoying it. And, uh, it's too bad they didn't get this kind of a crowd early in the year because I think they'd have kept coming back because... Orlando is an exciting football team, and they're certainly playing at their at their best tonight. Eddie Britton will field the second half kick for the Birmingham Fire, and he finds some nice running room. And Eddie Britton is out near the 40. Tackle made by Mike Nettles of Orlando. Of course, the big number, 32 to nothing on the scoreboard. Here are the rest of the first half numbers. Yeah, look at the time of possession. How meaningless that can be. Yeah, that is a meaningless stat for the most part. It's just the fact that Birmingham had to get away from their game plan. They had 20 yards rushing, which is it's just uh, you just can't have that if you're that kind of a football player. And worse than that, 32 yards passing after a lot of passes. 32 points by Orlando, 16 by the offense, and 16 by either the defense or special teams. Norset. And that was not a good decision. Norset would probably be better off running that football. Yeah, that looked like a lateral almost. Again, trying to, you know, you get yourself in this place, you try to find big plays and you try to have that thing in your head. I got to make something happen. And uh, you almost had a, a disaster. Oh, Chan 114 115 goes to the weak side on out of, out of hot 115 114. Okay. They lose two yards on the pass to Britain. Second down and no. 12. Now Morseth will run this. And he goes out of bounds standing up. And again, Glenn Rogers going up to talk to him a little bit, but Norseth gains some yards there, gains six. Here's a look at a coach just desperately trying to find something that works. 128 sweet. Tony D. You get in that position and all of a sudden the, the numbers on those on those play uh, cards start getting blurry. You can't read and you can't think and you, you just have to keep fighting. Getting eaten up. And he certainly hasn't had much luck so far in this game either. He's completely abandoned any pretense of running the football. Gonna give it off to the H-back Avery here. Sean Wolf pulling, but Orlando stops it shy of the first down. Carl Dunbar. Well, here's a big decision for Chan and whether to go for it now. He's going with the punting game, it looks like, or, or maybe a fake punt. Well, he's got fourth down and really only a yard. So Kirk Maggio. Now yeah, let's do the punting and again Birmingham getting a good kick return. They started the half in good field position but unable to capitalize. And that man scored two touchdowns in the first half. Ten man 
rush coming here by Orlando. Well, peeled back now, Mangio again, another low line drive punt. Oh, and Joe Howard Johnson came close to getting through on that one. He was tripped up by Junior Jackson. 35 yard punt and a 10 yard return. Anytime you punt the ball that low, the, the receiver gets a chance to attack the defense. They're almost going in opposite directions there, and that's what you're begging for when you're looking for punt returns. And they almost had the break again. When these two teams met two weeks ago. They had a real controversial play when Maggio punted a ball. It went into the end zone, was batted back into the field of play by Birmingham. Everyone assumed it was a down ball, but Joe Howard Johnson picked it up and ran it 90 yards for a score. Flags down as Daryl Clack carries to the 30. It's going to be offsides on Birmingham. Uh, again, give the Thunder first and five. Helen McDaniels, the man that jumped. Okay, uh, had man on the last one on third down, cover three, made it look like zero extra back, but it was cover three. Say that again now. Second down was cover three. Uh -huh. he, made it, he made it look like zero extra back. Right. It was cover three. Yeah. And the first one was the same. I, I couldn't, I think it was just base three. Okay, they just played zone there, yeah. Brian. Except for the third down. Chan Gailey talking about Orlando's defense. The Thunder offense clicks. Mitchell to Howard Johnson. That's nearer a first down. James Henry on the tackle. Up too quick, not setting up his block. But it is a first down. It, it almost looks like now, John, you see his concentration sure. wandering a bit. Sure, yeah. Yeah. That's the hard thing. Yeah, it, you just can't keep the negative thoughts from coming in. Uh, and it's uh, try as you will. It's uh, pretty tough. Thunder are going to have to hurry to get this first down playoff in time. And Mitchell does one on the play clock. And he splits that to four. And he is inside the 15. Chris Ford. Another perfectly thrown ball by Scott Mitchell. Before this game, I wondered a little bit uh, about Scott Mitchell's ability to throw that ball in the vertical passing game down the field. But boy, he is pretty much proven. Look at that throw. That's about a 25 or 30 yard uh, pass down the field right on the money. And he had a lot of a lot of speed on that ball. Uh, very impressive. 50 yards on the pass from Mitchell to Ford. And now Orlando and right back with Roger Vick. And he's tackled for a loss. Yeah, it'd be nice if he could put these nice points in the bank from now on. <laughs> Say, well, we'll save that and give yeah. us seven uh, to start the game. Here's a helmet cam. Uh, Hunter, the safety, again, watch him come up. Recognize run, come up and fill. Strong safeties have to be tacklers. They've got to be perhaps the toughest guys in the field. Two, 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 two. two. The flip out is incomplete. Mitchell trying to hit Joe Howard Johnson. He was hit himself by Maurice Oliver. Had a real good year for Birmingham. In fact, Gene Smith, their defensive coordinator, felt that he was the guy that was overlooked for the All-World League team. Well, he didn't take the fake at all. He came up the field and after the quarterback, that's one of the reasons when they've given the ball to the back, that cutback play has worked underneath uh, the outside backer who's coming up the field. Pete Hurt and Stanley King on the side send in the offensive Regular, signals for Birmingham. Go out. No. Regular. Third down at 11. Wow. Johnson was just standing there, standing there, and then he got popped by Arthur Hunter when the ball arrived. Well, it was a pattern. I think the, uh, the the primary receiver got bumped and got knocked off the pattern, and Scott was just sitting there waiting for something to happen. Here we look at uh, Art Hunter. We get a chance to look and listen to him. Here he's down, playing safety. You see the ball coming. He reacts to it, makes a play. Nice play, Art. We, could, we couldn't see his eyes, but I'll bet you they got awfully big when he saw a free shot yeah. at a receiver there. Field goal try of 30 yards. Another high snap. Criswell put it down nicely. Take Criswell's been an unsung hero today. He's hit on some high snaps nicely, and Bennett kicks it through. John Robert Holland, I rate. Well, he got held on that last one. 35 to nothing, Orlando. 
It's the first week of spring training, and a bunch of nice old ladies show up. Say cheese. <laughs> Wonderful. Nice, until we started working out. You call that exercising? Hey, Grandma, I don't see you doing it. <gasps> In your dreams, homeboy. Finally, cold buds for everybody. Adam boy. <laughs> Introducing tire foam from Armorall. One spray, and even old tires look great. Kind of makes you wish we made car foam, doesn't it? New tire foam from Armor All. Just spray, walk away. River Run, Shimmering Bay, Crystal Lake, Aqua Sea, Kawasaki. It's where I want to be. If where you want to be is where the action is, hop on a Kawasaki watercraft. Either the Jet Ski Sport Cruiser or the Tandem Sport will give you all the excitement that two of you can handle. Kawasaki. Let the good times roll. Kawasaki. All of them wearing lime green. Did you ever think you'd see that day in your life, John, when a professional sports team would be so attired? You know, the lime green looks pretty good right now. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, it, you know, it's funny, uh, whenever a team is playing good, uh, everything about them looks good. Well, you see something that we haven't seen this year. Sean Moore appears to be poised to enter the game for Birmingham on this possession. Tracy Bennett kicking it. This will be a run back chance for Eddie Britton from the goal line. Flag flying uh, from behind, and Britton stops shy of the 20. Wayne Dixon on the tackle for Orlando. And there's a penalty which is going to set them back further. They're going to start their offense around their own 10 here. You know, I, get, I think it's maybe subconscious that referees, when you're losing and not playing well, the referees just seem to focus in on you and add to the misery that you have. And, of course, part of it is that you're not playing well and making those kind of errors. We're going to see Sean uh, more for the first time this season, really. Jackson of Birmingham is the uh, offender there. Mike Norseth, six out of 17 for 30 yards. He punted on the quick kick for 56. He punted for more than he passed tonight. Well, that's kind of night. One of those nights. Sean Moore. Because right uh, if you stand it. Starting from the nine yard line. Moore flips it out to Kirkpatrick complete. And he's out to the 14. It's a five yard game. This is the Chan Galen. Uh, orange left, hot 628 wheel on. Be ready, okay? Rick. Well, he's got a new quarterback in there, a man who really hasn't done much for a while. He's He's got to go in and have fun. Looks like he is having fun. I, I'm impressed with that kind of a look. Just, hey, gang, let's just go out and do it and let it, let it happen. He was a great quarterback at Virginia. Sean Moore led Virginia to the brink of a national championship in 1990. Flips that one out incomplete. Again, there's that blitz where they just can't pick everybody up, and it gives the quarterback no chance at all to throw the ball. Now they're coming up on third and five again, deep in their own territory. Third and five. Okay, here we go. Let's go with the 209 dig post. Orange left, hot 209 dig post. Why did Joe step down in there like that? A lot of questions hear, tonight. Yeah, you, you, hear, hear them. you heard the coaches upstairs, yeah. you know, questioning the decision on pass blocking. Here comes that blitz again, it looks like. All right, fall back. Only a four man rush. And the pass very high and incomplete. Willie Boyer, the intended receiver. Boyer has not caught a pass tonight. The number two receiver in the World League all year with 57 catches. None tonight, and again, three downs and out for Birmingham. The sad thing about a night like this for this team is they've done so well, and they've played so hard, and they've won so many clutch games, and uh, 
it's just embarrassing to have it go so badly for you on your last time out. Maggio standing uh, a yard into the end zone. Joe Howard Johnson. This time a little better kick. The coverage is better. Look out. <laughs> and still Joe Howard Johnson managed to escape several would-be tacklers and got it back close to midfield. Well, he's smiling. It's been that kind of night. The Orlando Thunder staring straight at a trip to the World Bowl. This year, the Lake Edna players present the Wild West Review. Tonight, director Lauren Clark tried to motivate her cast of cowboys with new KFC Honey Barbecue Chicken. Fried chicken glazed in a special sauce with a touch of honey. The chicken was unbelievable, as were a few of the performances. Try the two-piece Honey Barbecue Roundup meal, just $2.99, or the eight-piece meal, just $9.99, for a limited time in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. Straight answers from Sally Struthers on ICS. Sally, will I really make more money after I train through ICS? Just compare your present salary with the money you could be making in any ICS career. Sally, can I really train at home? Absolutely. Over 10 million men and women have. Just call this number for free facts on any one of these courses. High school, TV, VCR repair, child daycare, computer programming, electrician, veterinary assistant, medical dental office, bookkeeping, legal assistant, interior decorating, drafting, hotel restaurant management, learning the personal computer, or get your degree. You can major in business management or accounting. When is the best time to start? There's no time like the present, so call now. Call now for the free information Sally Struthers spoke about. Then decide if you want to train at home for a better career to make more money. Call 1-800-382-2500. There is no obligation. No salesman will visit you. Call 1-800-382-2500. When you watch TV, you like to see lots of big names, right? Hey, they're on USA. I thought by now Pete Koharczyk would be over there telling, hey, guys, I got a great restaurant in Montreal. We're going to have dinner there Tuesday night, a table in the back, nice red wine. Now, when you're winning, you love to talk about it. Roger Vick carries on the first out play for Orlando. We have 725 to go in the third. There's Charlie Bailey in front. He is the defensive coordinator for the Orlando Thunder. Well, things are going Charlie's way. Now he can sit there and kind of pick his nose and, and kind of say, hey, this, is, this game's not too hard. I never, I never knew that was part of the coach's job description. Oh, well, that's, that's a sign you're way ahead. Hot, hot. <laughs> Second down. And a nice reversal of field by Davis. And Willie Davis is down inside the 40. Yeah, well, it's fun about the World League uh, if you're winning and not so fun if you're like Arthur Hunter whose helmet cam we see right now. 36 man rosters you get a game like this you got to play it out. There are no reserves. To come and finish else, for yeah. you. you can't say hey you take it for a series. You know I, I think the salvation of the uh, World League may be in fact uh, what's happened to Scott Mitchell here this season. Here's a guy that started this season uh, inexperienced in professional football has had a great season. <laughs> Oh, well he got that over Tracy Sanders and right into the gut of Granis Bell, but John Miller broke it up. Ted, this is a great display of passing. Uh, we're seeing this guy put the ball on the money all over the field, from the left side to the right side, short passing, long passing, scrambling. Watch this ball go right over his face. That's a beautiful throw. And they would have been out of bounds. Out of bounds. But, that was, out. but that throw was was yep. exactly what. And, and don't don't tell me anything about the competition in the world like that's execution executing the quarterback position well Roger Vick brought down for a big loss Arthur Hunter made the hit for Birmingham once again the head Hunter through helmet cam well we've enjoyed a, a look through helmet cam this year it's one of the most invading innovative things to come into sports television you see what the player sees and you get a feel of what the football game is like art hunter who's an, a very tough football player you get a look right in his eyes and i i think that's marvelous 
As we are wont to remind people, the Emmy Award winning helmet cam. Third down. Five. And 15 here from the Birmingham hot, hot. 45. <laughs> Blitz coming on Mitchell. This time he can't get away. And there's still a pass almost caught by Willie Davis. And now a flag is thrown. And that, uh, let's see. Thrown with an offensive lineman standing down the field. Let's see if that was the. Uh, well, it's reason. going to come up fourth down. I think they'll decline that and uh, try to get the ball back as soon as possible. Yeah, there are a couple offensive linemen standing out there inside the 40, and that's what the call is. But that'll be declined, and Birmingham, or Birmingham will get the ball back via a punt. Hey, ineligible lineman on the offense, number 68 downfield. Penalty is declined, fourth down. Tom White, a veteran NFL official, uh, the officiating, I think, in this league has been has been good this year and it's a good, again a great opportunity for young officials in the NFL to get a chance to uh, uh, learn and perform and improve. That one just sneaks in from Ray Criswell upon in the end zone so Birmingham will start from the 20 yard line with four minutes and 50 seconds to play in the third quarter. Orlando started early and they have been relentless leading 35 to nothing. Perhaps uh, the least important person in the stadium is the place kicker of a team who's behind by 35 points in the second half. Well, Doyle knows that the chances may not be too uh, plentiful for him the rest of the way. It's interesting to get a chance to look at Sean Moore. I, he's a man who hasn't had a chance to develop his skills yet this in his young pro career. That's a pick. Todd Crum has it on the deflection. Inside the 20. So Todd Crum on the interception. Pass was deflected right into his hands, and Orlando gets the ball right back. We got a great helmet cam here coming up with this ball coming right at Andrews. Here again, sitting in the zone. Here's that ball coming. Catch it, Rick. Come on. <laughs> why those guys are great, linebackers. Great look. Isn't that a great look? That's why he's a linebacker. He always wanted to be a tight end. And when he was third day in high school football, they threw him that same pass at <laughs> get over on the other side, kids. And now at the 16 uh, of Birmingham. And inside, nothing there. Tommy Stowers carrying the ball for the first time out of Missouri, 235-pounder. Tommy Stowers, the ball carrier. Nothing there for the Orlando running back. It was Rick Andrews wearing helmet cam tonight. University of Washington player. He's got to be happy. His Huskies have had one of the all-time great years this year in college football. Ball at the 17. Well, for Sean Moore, he's learned quickly what it's like to be back in a ball game. Well, what did he? Hot, hot. It's a wide open. Willie Davis for six more. Touchdown pass thrown by Scott Mitchell. The second one caught by Willie Davis, and it's 41 to nothing. Well, I think we've seen the last of Scott Mitchell. Uh, they got to get him out and start getting him thinking about next week. Uh, uh, they're going to the World Bowl, and uh, again, look at that that ball. He's just on the money tonight. This guy's going to be an outstanding quarterback. He already is at, 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 at this level of football. I think he will be in the next level, too. Tracy Bennett puts through the point. And it has been quite a night. Scott Mitchell made that rather strong statement in the Miami paper yesterday that we mentioned, and he's backed it up tonight big time. Well, what, what it indicates to me that I think that for every general NFL general manager or head coach, this is a, an example of of uh, getting ready for the future. They get your young quarterback playing, and he's matured very well. well Galen knows where he's going in Montreal. To 
solve a mystery. Who are we looking for here? IRA terrorists or some ultra-violent faction of the IRA? To stop a killer. This is who we should be looking for. We'll find her, we'll find them. To save his family. Sean Miller escaped. Well, what does that mean? Jack Ryan must play a deadly game. How many are coming? Where's Sean Miller? Based on the best-selling novel, Harrison Ford, Patriot Games. The games begin June 5th, rated R. We were all tied up on the Delacour case, unable to identify the mystery plot. Luckily, Louis was back. A Freedom Zoom kit. With Minolta's unique eye start, Freedom starts zooming before it even meets your eye. So, when you can't get to the picture, Freedom zooms the picture to you. And fast. Shoot! Look at this. It's our secretary. Looks like she takes more than dictation. Americans choose the freedom to zoom. Only from the mind of Minolta. Every shot is a blast of sound. The harder you hit it, the bigger the boom. Boom ball. Play it outside, play it inside. It's what excitement sounds like from Catacomb. Davis has caught two touchdowns tonight. Joe Howard Johnson caught another one from Scott Mitchell. And it's 42 to nothing. Less than four minutes to play in the third quarter. That goes through the end zone. Well, the future of the World League hopefully will be resolved shortly. And recently, Michael Barkan had a chance to catch up with Kansas City Chiefs owner Lamar Hunt in Montreal and ask him his feeling about the World League. Well, my feeling is there should be and will be, yes. But I, I would want to reserve. I can't speak for the full 28-member NFL ownership. And uh, But I'm an optimist. I'm an expansionist, an optimist. And I believe the game of football is a growing game. And I think we've got to do some things to structure the World League better. But uh, my feeling would be, yes, positive. Starting at the 20-yard line now is Sean Moore. They hand the ball off inside to Harris. Boy, Harris, just his third carry tonight, and the ball's free. And it's apparently a live football. And Orlando covers it. Now, nope, let's see. And now they're going to blow the play dead, I believe. Now, let's see. One official's back at the point of the play, calling it a dead play. The player was ruled down. Yep. Contact the ball still belongs to Birmingham. Second down. That's a great call, whether he was down or not. Yes. <laughs> it's a great call. <laughs> Just to, you know. Just for competitive and it's also balance. It happens to be the right call. Uh, yeah. I, I, he looks like he was down, but. You just wish they could make it a little clearer so you don't have 27 guys banging around, potentially hurting themselves for a football. Second down now. The 24 yard line. And he Britton on the catch made one man miss. And Britton has a first down for Birmingham. Well, there becomes a point in the game uh, where we've still got uh, about 12 minutes, uh, I mean, 17 minutes to go in this game when you get to the point as a, as a losing coach say, hey, let's just get this baby over with. We want to keep that clock going somewhat. In the World League, on a completed pass, that clock does continue to work. So they can throw and the clock still runs trips, down. Good, good, good. 245 to play third quarter. Birmingham with a first down. Sean Moore's first first down as a Birmingham quarterback this year. Handoff is to Harris. And he's going to get another first down. Strong run out at near midfield. Hooked up by number 51, Dean Murkowski. We'll listen to Chan Gailey. We will catch up on we'll get your thoughts on the Lamar Hunt comment in a moment. Leaning back in his chair, Gene Smith, the defensive coordinator. No joy in Birmingham tonight, huh? They're coming here. Here's the blitz coming. I, you kind of hope they'd have some mercy here. Wow. And Moore just unloads it, flips it away. Bryant all over. I think we got a penalty downfield. We've got a, uh, I think, a holding downfield or perhaps a, 
an offensive lineman downfield. I'm not sure quite sure. It looks like that's what it was. Umpire, that's that's the most offensive lineman downfield I've seen in years. You know, John, it was interesting to hear Lamar Hunt talk about the World League future and being so bullish on it. It's a great man to have say that because, of course, he founded the Dallas Texans in the old AFL in 1960. He went through all of this. He knows what it takes and what growing pains you go through in a fledgling league. Well, I would think uh, NFL uh, general managers, head coaches, would be eager to get more players playing in this league, not just the not just the end of your roster, but promising young players. Well, that's it. Because Scott it's been Mitchell's, so, Scott Sean Mitchell's Moore's, as you said. Absolutely. Get the young player uh, an opportunity to play. Eligible lineman downfield, number 74 in the offense, 10 yards, still first down. Ted, I've been very convinced in my, my exposure to the World League that the men coaching in this level are outstanding coaches. So if you entrust one of your players to a, a, a Shan Galley or, or a, a Galen Hall or or any of the other coach Riley from uh, San Antonio coach Stevenson from uh, Sacramento you're going to get as good coaching for a young player as you can have and again sometimes it doesn't work that's the Sean Moore experiment this year but the Scott Mitchell one's paid up great dividends here's Eddie Britton and Eddie Britton upended Todd Crum and nice open field tackle well, they're playing free and with abandon, and they're just moving quicker than the other guys. Pick it back, pick it back. Now, coming up near the end of our game tonight, we'll present tonight's Edge Helmet Cam play of the game. Well, I think we all know what that was. Yeah. That was one of the great views, and you know that helmet cam has been such a such a great thing. I, I, I look forward to that as much as anything that I've seen it, uh, for a number of years. Racine Keaton, linebacker out of UCLA, with the sack for Orlando. It's their second of the game. Hey John, we talk about helmet cam and the views it gives us. The technology is wonderful, but you know something? The people. And we've had outstanding work by our crews all year long that have helped make helmet cam and the audio that we hear every week possible. Yeah, it, it puts you in a whole new dimension about your your sense of uh, being in the game as opposed to being a voyeur from way up in the press box somewhere. Back, back, back up, back up, he's a back up, he. Further convinces you that sometimes you must have a little uh, bit of an edge to be a linebacker. <laughs> Those hit hunt the safety move. Moore got walloped there. Oh, he got smacked. And that was Wayne Dixon. And Sean Moore is welcome to the world of professional football rather rudely by, as you mentioned, a team that's playing carefree right now. Well, again, they're, you know, they're, they're just laying their ears back and coming. Uh, they're coming with a lot of pass rush stunts. Uh, there's no reason not to. Uh... The third quarter comes to an end on this play. Orlando Thunder are looking at a spot in the World Bowl. Sharp. What you need in copiers is sharp. Sharp. Sharp thinking about business. It gives you the award-winning Master Series, Sharp's most advanced high-speed, high-volume copying system. Sharp thinking about copiers. It's built into our full line of copiers to make your business more productive. Sharp. Sharp. More cost-efficient. It's made Sharp Copiers number one. Number one. In customer satisfaction. Sharp thinking about business. Bifocals. I'm going to look just like my father. My grandfather. Wait, nobody will notice the lines if I do some cool frames or something. This is not working. For those who refuse to be seen in bifocals, we offer the perfect disguise. Verilux No-Line Bifocals. The vision you need, the look you want, none of the lines. Call for a Verilux professional near you. When you need to know what's going on in the sporting world, there's only one number you need to call. 1-900-370-3322. Jim Feist Sports Extra at 75 cents per minute. 
Jim Vice Sports Extra provides you with the fastest and most complete scoring updates in the country, all in the official Nevada rotation. You're able to access the latest Vegas line, weather conditions, injuries, and much, much more. Call 1-900-370-3322. We have uh, seen perhaps some future for the Miami Dolphins here tonight. Scott Mitchell, the quarterback for the Orlando Thunder out of Utah, where he left school after his third year and is getting some outstanding experience this year. For Orlando, three touchdown passes tonight and a convincing Orlando lead through three quarters. Kirk Maggio with the Birmingham punt and Joe Howard Johnson. A little bit of that return man arrogance there is that I haven't run anything back. It's time he loses seven yards. Well, that's the punt Maggio needed in the first yeah. quarter, so early. Yeah. We've got a, uh, looks like we have a flag down behind the play. No, perhaps not, just a, a loose piece of equipment down. And Kerwin Bell is coming out to do the quarterbacking now for the Thunder, and you hear some Warm applause for Kerwin Bell. He's crowd favorite, of course, because he played at Florida. He was the quarterback for the Thunder here last year when he had those kind of numbers and a wide open pass attack. Hands off inside to looks like Roger Vick on the carry. You know, Dick, this Orlando football uh, franchise has made a real turnaround. They brought in Dick Beam as a general manager, Galen Hall as a coach, and this football team has really uh, redone itself and now is, uh, you know, at the top of the league uh, going to the World Bowl. Uh, you know, they didn't get the kind of crowds that they wanted early, but now late in the season, the crowds are starting to come. But it's, you got to give a lot of credit to those two men, Dick Beam and, and Galen Hall. Now Bell goes into the shotgun on second down and nine. Oh, that's too high to Joe Howard Johnson, incomplete. It's interesting that uh, John I, in the World Bowl looks like Orlando's going to be there, and Sacramento's a heavy favorite tomorrow. If that's the matchup at the World Bowl, you would have two teams that completely changed virtually everything on their teams from year one to year two, Birmingham and Barcelona. The other playoff team tomorrow are two clubs that stayed virtually the same from year one to year two. That's right. And 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 what what these two teams have, if in fact Sacramento does go, and that's going to be a tougher game than people think, but uh, we're going to see the two really outstanding quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. And kind of the young and the old yeah, uh, of this league. Uh, uh, David Archer, who's who's made had a phenomenal year uh, and uh, you know is is finding a way back into the NFL because of that. Uh, great year, Scott Mitchell, who's who's found respect and a future. Orlando because of his year. Running out of time on the play clock, they take a timeout early in the fourth quarter. Lightning blade actually make your job as easy as this? Well, lightning stays sharp longer, cuts easier than the blade you're using, or your money back. like Polaroid. Hi, I'm Regis Philbin. You know, I've been suffering with back pain for years. I tried all these rubs. They worked, but I smelled so medicine-y. Then I discovered odor-free Aspicream. I just rub an Aspicream for hours of concentrated relief right where I hurt. It relieves the pain fast, and it's odor-free. That's the difference. Go ahead. Try odor-free Aspicream yourself. With Aspicream, you'll get fast relief. Hours of relief. And aspirin cream is aspirin free. Chan Gailey, well, he did blink there. He, but the blinks are <laughs> few and far between right now. 
for an obviously disappointed man who felt very good about his football team and the way they played to make the playoffs, but tonight has seen it all crumble, and it just it disintegrated rapidly. Yeah, it sure did. Wow. Well, Orlando has it now third down at nine. They hand the ball off inside to Roger Vick. And Vick will be stopped short of a first down. Well, Orlando hoping that that timeout that they had to call there will come back to hurt of late this fourth quarter. <laughs> This is the time in the game where Chan Galley should go down to one of those sideline officials and say, hey, keep that clock going, man. Let's get out of here. What a well-placed $50 bill help. Yeah, <laughs> just keep that baby going. Great Criswell to punt it. Oh, knuckleball kick goes out of bounds. Not a very good punt there, and it's out of bounds at about the 40-yard line of Orlando. So Birmingham will get... Their best field position of the game, just a 26-yard punt. Right now, the fire hope they can just get on the board. How's that? Great! I like these the best. You got it. I always tell my customers, be sure to take your credit card receipts. I should have listened to myself. Whoa. Citibank for me? The other day I got a call from Citibank. Hello? It seems somebody charged some pretty fancy stuff on my card number. Citibank suspected fraud, but they said I wouldn't be responsible for the charges. I've seen Citibank look out for my customers. Seems they're also looking out for me. It's not just Visa, Citibank Visa. I'm Cy Sperling, president of Hair Club for Men. If you have thinning hair, then this new booklet is something you should have. If you call our toll-free number, we'll send you our new brochure, which contains information about various hair replacement methods, including what the FDA has to say about the drug minoxidil. Of course, you'll also learn about Hair Club's new non-surgical polyfuse method. Whether wet right out of the shower or blown dry before going out, it looks and feels natural, just like a part of you. Hair Club's new polyfuse method literally fuses top quality human hair to your own hair. Even when you feel it, feel around the perimeter of your head, I mean, you really cannot feel anything in your hair. It really gave me more ways to be able to do my hair, and I could do it in more of a 90s fashion. A new healthy head of hair can renew confidence and improve self-esteem. It may also bring out the best of who you are. So make sure you call our toll-free number to receive our new brochure. It's loaded with information so you can make the right choice for yourself. And by the way, I'm not only the Hair Club president, but I'm also a client. I thought you subpoenaed me, Mr. D.A. For the secret passion of Robert Clayton on USA Tonight. Now back here in Orlando. Oh, my tickets were picked up tonight. That's nice to see. 12.51 to play in Orlando That's leading. 42 to nothing. Coming in, starting from the Orlando 40-yard line, is Sean Moore. And he hits Willie Boyer. He has his first catch of the night, and it's a first down inside the 30. Only the third pass of more than 10 yards for Birmingham tonight. One of the oddest statistics of this World League season, Willie Boyer, the second leading receiver in the league, 57 catches this year, John, and no touchdowns. Time out, time out, time out, time well, out. Birmingham was a team that, that ran the football inside the 20. I think they had most of their touchdowns were rushing touchdowns. Well, now Orlando, short of player, takes another timeout. Willie really Boyer probably happy. He looks like he's moving a little slowly himself. Well, he got his foot twisted that time. Willie really Boyer played at Michigan State. You talk about a guy that kind of got overlooked. They had uh, Andre Risen on the other side and a running back by the name of Lorenzo White, who wasn't bad either. And so Willie really Boyer was a kind of forgotten man. Well, he's been a consistent receiver, and he's been a, a really physical and brave receiver. He's caught that ball in traffic all year and uh, has had a great year. Tomorrow on USA, winning is the only way to survive this deadly game. Roddy McDowell and Mark Singer star in a USA world premiere movie, Encore. Tomorrow night at 7, 6 central on USA. They will definitely be tuned in. From the 29, a first down for Birmingham. Fire had one scoring chance in the game. Philip Doyle missed a 42-yard field goal in the first half. 
And Moore puts the hang time on that pass. And it's incomplete. Eddie Britton pleading his case with Todd Crum. And that from Thomas on coverage. Here's the jump ball in the end zone. We're going to get a chance to see on, on the replay. And as that ball's up, say, who can get up for this? Looks like the NBA player. Oh, he's up there. He just can't stay. You needed to call Michael Jordan and say, how do you stay up there when you get up? That's a good job when the, when you got two or three people there. The guy that gets up first, if the receiver gets up first, can get can kind of con a pass interference sometimes. Uh, but he did a nice job of trying to get it up there and be the first guy to jump. Sean Moore put a little something on that yeah. ball. Yeah, he's got a strong arm. Second down at 10. It's the Jim Bell. The Birmingham running tandem of... Harris and Bell has been a non-factor tonight. The early scores by Orlando eliminating that. And between the two of them, Harris and Bell have combined to carry the ball only five times tonight. The Orlando defense has impressed me. They, they look much quicker, much more active than, I've, than, I, than I think they were early in the year. They've made steady improvement. The focus on this team has been on the offense, but that's a good defensive team, and it's going to serve them well next week in the World Bowl. I think they will give a good account of themselves. Down in seven. Again, Orlando showing blitz. And Sean Moore beats it. Nice pass and nice catch by Eddie Britton for a first down at the 15. Well, that was a nice job by Moore. He he had all the problems that you need as a quarterback. They, uh, they were coming with everybody, and up to this point, they hadn't picked anybody up. He comes back, gets the ball off, and is accurate with the ball. When you throw against blitz coverage, a lot of times you have a, a receiver open. Here's Andrews trying on, on a pass rush. He gets stopped immediately. And was almost jumped the snap count. He had to hold up for a moment. Score on the bootleg. Nice job to avoid one man. Oh, he got and it. that is. Give it a to him. Give it to him. Oh, out. come on. Well, the man got caught there, and I'm not sure the official understood what kind of a call to make. And after a deliberation, he called Willie Boyer out of bounds. Well, that, that, it was too bad it was a delayed yeah. call, and it, it was a great job by Sean Moore. You shouldn't take that away from him. No. I think that was the right call, but again, it took it took too long to make. And I believe he was made the right call. Willie Boyer has to get two feet in here. He needs two feet to get in. One and... One. That's definitely in. When you're down 42 to nothing, you only need one foot in back. That's a new rule in the World League this year. And that's out of bounds. But we're going to get a flag here. I believe. Well, let's see. Well, Sean fell down from the snap from center. But, you know, he's, his athletic ability, uh, really, you can just see it already. He can, he's can scramble. He's got a strong arm. And his, his delivery is, is a quick delivery. Doesn't wind up. So here's a man with some real potential also. No flag there. It was an uncatchable ball. The official signal. Third and ten. Hey, ball at the 15 hey, of Orlando. 9-10 to play in the game. Quick hit to Britton. A nice block inside, and Eddie Britton will score. Well, that's the first one of those he's gotten up the field. He, all the other ones that they had tried, and that was a big play for them tonight. Britton kept going sideways. That time he got it up the field and ran right by some people. Did a nice job. So the Birmingham fire on the board as Sean Moore hits Eddie Britton for six. The last cut so he got by Crum, and that's what got him in the end zone. Now Philip Doyle for the extra point. So Birmingham with 8.59 to play in the game is on the board. People thought they might have seen this earlier this year. Sean Moore throwing a touchdown pass for the fire. It comes late in a game that appears to have already been decided. Barcelona. Twelve of our best men will be bound by a common past, a common goal, 
and a common thread. Champion is proud to have been chosen to make the uniform for America's team. Because we understand, too, it takes a little more to make a champion. Take a look at this revolutionary new car wax, Turtle Wax. New high-tech formula, Turtle Wax. The no rubbing, no buffing, bring back the shine 12-month car wax. This is an old beater, but in just minutes, today's Turtle Wax safely brings back the shine. Get today's high-tech formula, Turtle Wax. Watch out, some household detergents can strip car wax. So use Zip Wax Car Wash. It cleans safely and lets the turtle wax shine shine through. This is not what you want in a shave. Now you've got the edge with six rich lubricants. For less irritation, you've got the edge. You are here. She has a traveler's checks here. There's got to be a better way. Here's one now. New American Express Traveler's Checks for two. The first checks either of you can use. Don't leave home without them. Ghosts, ESP, reincarnation. Anything's possible when we take you beyond reality on USA. Join us for all new episodes, Friday nights. Well, I will see an onside kick here. We do, and the ball's free. And it's still free and finally squirts out to Birmingham. So the fire recovers the onside kick just shy of midfield. And it's Orlando's players that for the first time tonight are complaining. I don't think the officials were very responsive on that play. I, I'm not sure the ball wasn't touched before it went 10 yards. Okay, Tom White. The ball's got to go 10 yards before a Birmingham player touches it. Well, he did. Jackson hit it, hit the ball, well, I think, that time. I think it already had gone 10, though. Well, that's why officials have conferences. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One guy says it went 10, yep. the other guy says no. I think Birmingham should have the ball. That's my, that's what they should be saying in there. Say, hey, give him the ball. We want to see Sean Moore play a little bit. Sorry, Tom, but we can't hear you. Ah, that's a ball, I But we know what he said. Birmingham's football. John had just appeared in this, just from up here, it appeared Orlando wasn't real ready for an onside kick. Rush. Well, they had no, they, they, they're in an onside kick formation. They had right? the second line oh, up there close. I just don't know that they had their hands team where they put in receivers that are the better people at handling the ball. Well, Birmingham back with the football. Moore throws the underneath pattern to Boyer. Moves the ball into Orlando territory. You know, uh, Ted, Dan Reeves, uh, the coach of the Denver Broncos, has an interesting uh, situation this year. He has Sean Moore, a young quarterback, and they have drafted uh, Tommy Maddox from UCLA. So conceivably, uh, we could see both those young players in the world yeah. like next year. And the backup job in Denver is open. Veteran Gary Kubiak has retired. Yeah, so that's, that's why Denver wanted Sean Moore to play in the World League and get some experience. And Boyer with that catch short of a first down. The reason Shaw Moore's not playing, people say, well, why isn't he playing? Well, the way Chan Gailey looked at it, they went to training camp and he had Norseth, a veteran, Shaw Moore, a youngster, and they let him battle for the job. And, and Chan just says, Norseth won the job, flat out competition, and has not done anything since the season started to lose it. Well, that's, and, and that's what, this game is all about it's competition and the coach has to give the, the job to the uh, the man that earns the job but you can see you can see Sean Moore's uh, talent just his physical gifts are are significant third down here third down short two as Harris gets the pitch and he won't get it and it was Rick Andrews Mr. Helmet Cam made the first hit again you see the quickness of this Orlando defense this is a uh, uh, I'm a little surprised at it and very impressed with it. They are surrounding that football quickly. Here you see Andrews as a linebacker comes off the tight ends blocks, comes underneath it really. That was a mistake by the tight end. You saw the tight end block into Andrews, then kind of wheel his body around, and Andrews took the inside, made a big play. On oh, fourth down now, Birmingham will go for it. 
Rodgers surveys the alignment. Watch the slant. Watch the slant. It's fourth down and five here for Birmingham from the Orlando 45. And an incompletion. They turn the ball back over to the Thunder. And for Mark Hopkins, the tight end. You know, John, in all candor, what's going to have to happen if there is year three in the World League is there's going to have to be some decision made on those conflicting schools. I thought we talked about regarding Sean Moore. That, that gets down to what this league is. If this league is a developmental league and it's being funded in part by the NFL, then the Sean Moores have to play. That's what they're here for. Well, they have to be given an opportunity to play. I, you know, I, I think there are there's always going to be some controversy surrounding that, but what I think is clear is how important it is for the young player in the in the NFL to have a chance to continue right. to grow. Uh, we saw the best of that in, in uh, Scott Mitchell. If I were still coaching in the NFL, uh, the year that uh, Dave Archer had, I would be looking very hard at Dave Archer next year. I think David Archer could be uh, very successful with an NFL football team uh, this next season. Particularly after the way his skills have been sharpened by his clear, clearly outstanding year and his great leadership ability. Scott Mitchell, no uncertainty there. He knows where he's going. Dave Archer, not sure yet. His rights belong to Philadelphia. And of course, Sean Moore knows where he's going. Back to Denver. And Kerwin Bell. Underneath here for Orlando. On the bootleg. Throws it out to tight end Michael Titley, and that's a pass to midfield, which will leave uh, Orlando with third down and almost six. 5.45 to play. Can you believe that he was a quarterback once? Play that dime oh, he was five. a good quarterback, and he was a good quarterback on an outstanding Penn State team. Two outside guys. Um, uh, we ought to be all right here, shouldn't we? Oh, yeah. All most valuable player in the Gator Bowl game, 1961. That's what they do in the heat. Spent 18 years yes, you know, coaching with a lot of good people like Chuck Fairbanks and Barry Switzer. Yeah, no, you don't know that. Come on, Rosie. Come on, Rosie. <laughs> Kerwin Bell to Joe Howard Johnson. And that is the first down before he is collared by Fred Foggy. I think if I were Galen Hall right now, I would have all of those guys that are going to be important next week out of that ball game. Red, red, no, it's left pink. Amazing about Galen Hall, John. Is here's a guy that when he ran into the problems that forced his resignation at Florida, Galen Hall, who's 49 years of age, went back to Penn State. Joe Paterno hired him as a graduate assistant at age 49. He did it for a year. Well, that's a, that's a, that's again. If you look at the the kind of man he is and the kind of man Joe Paterno is, uh, probably a very difficult time in, in Galen's life. And Joe Paterno was there. Uh, and I'm sure he contributed a great deal to the Penn State program. Junior Jackson hits Roger Vick down there for a loss. 4-15 to play Orlando, leading 42-7. to Thunder are headed to Montreal next Saturday. Brad Nessler, Boomer Esiason, and uh, pending of the permission of the Canadian government, Michael Barkan will all be there to bring you the World Bowl on the USA. What's the boot? Enjoying poutine. Did you enjoy those on your first trip to Montreal this year? I missed out on those. Oh, come on, Kerwin! French fries and gravy. I don't know. It sounds like an awfully terrific combination to me. Plus, 90 plus. Orlando's out of timeouts. Throw it away. Let's hope it doesn't end. A six-year-old in her first two-wheeler. My favorite kind of customer. But no sooner do they take off her training wheels than someone takes off with her bike. So her father calls the police, and then Citibank Visa. Well, the bike never turns up, but it turns out Citibank has a program that replaces it free. I see what Citibank does for their customers. That's why I became one. Not just Visa, Citibank Visa. a Thunder fan, huh? Probably has tickets for the next 17 Grateful Dead shows as well. <laughs> 3 48 to play here, Orlando. Kerwin oh, Bell, shit. oh boy, he's got a man wide open. And they're going to call him down by
by contact, ran his bell, whistled dead about the 18-yard line. Well, there's no more lonely man on this field right now than Chan Galley. He's over there standing by himself. There's nothing much he can do. He has done a great coaching job this year for Birmingham. This football team had to win every one of their last four games to stay alive, and they managed to yes, do it. Did. They didn't get great individual performance, but they certainly did a great job as a team. And I think he did a great job. Uh, uh, Galen Hall certainly deserves Coach of the Year, but this man uh, deserves some credit for being, you know, for really a great job. It's just a shame the year has to end that way for him. Uh, you would like if you're going down to go down in the last second with, uh, you know, your all flags flying, but uh, he deserves a lot of, uh, he, there's, he's done a lot to be proud of. Willie Davis on the catch to the 10 yard line. And you know, John, we, have, we tend to overlook. Chan Gailey certainly did a great job. He got his team to the playoffs. Mike Riley's San Antonio Riders finished seven and three and don't make the playoffs at all, which was very frustrating to everybody there. And Mike Riley deserves a lot of kudos as well, did a fine job. There's some, there's some really outstanding coaches in this way. Roger Vick carries the ball down to about the six yard line. Well, we've relocated Michael Barkhead. Where are you, Mike? High end zone, Ted. And I'll tell you, the Orlando folks were concerned about attendance. They wanted about 30,000 people for tonight's game. They got just about that. I'm in the end zone with the Thunder Nuts, and these guys are what, some of the biggest rooters in Orlando. Let me show you, show me your stuff, guys. Come on. The Thunder Nuts. Here we go. I don't know what to say, but I love it. I'm going to have a seat. Mike fits right in with yes, that group. Does. <laughs> Wonderful recruiting job, guys. <laughs> Great job. Great job, guys. What is that? We have a two-minute warning here in Orlando. Shine a light on you. Shine a light on me. Keep your foot light shining. If you're into looking good, get into Bud Light. The clean, fresh taste won't fill you up, never let you down. Hey, you can taste it, you can feel it, you know you got it right. Everything else is just a lie. Keep your Bud Light shining. Everything else is just a lie. This is not what you want in a shave. Now you've got the edge. This is the shave with six rich lubricants. This is the shave that reduces irritation. This is the shave. For less irritation, you've got the edge. Edge, proud sponsor of the NBA Most Valuable Player Award. The Edge Helmet Cam Play of the Game is brought to you by Edge Shaving Gel. For less irritation, you've got the edge. And what does Helmet Cam bring us tonight but the should have been intercepted ball by Rick Andrews? Mm. Rick needs that stick him, John. Very this beautiful, and he, and he keeps his eye on the ball. He got that much. <laughs> he just got too much tape in his hands. He got to get that tape off of his hands and he's going to catch the ball. That's a great look at it, and uh, uh, boy. That's right, Mickey goes to Montreal next week. Well, we've got a and big Mike game. Mike Barkan, too. And there's a big game tomorrow, Sacramento and Barcelona. We're talking about coaches. Jack McNell has done a great job for that football move, team. Move, 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 move. Fairway Bell rolling out, just kind of standing there, calmly waiting, and throwing a pass that's incomplete. Intended for uh, Tommy Stowers in the end zone and incomplete. You know, Jack McNell has done a wonderful job because Barcelona has been gone for a month. They have not been able to be home and be a Montjuic Stadium. Uh, that's right. The upcoming Olympics, so they've had to spend the last month in North America. But Galen Hall and his Orlando Thunder are heading to Montreal. They'll be leaving Monday to spend the week up there before the game next Saturday night. And a reminder, you'll see it right here on USA at 8 o'clock, 7 central, next Saturday. 
Vic goes inside. Inside the five, it'll be third down with a minute 45 to play. Well, Galen Hall may be wearing that in about a minute 45 seconds. Huh? Nice job, guys. Stop your feet and roar the thunder. Well, John, I've enjoyed having the chance to work with you this year. This has been a lot of fun, and uh, we need to thank our outstanding crew. We've had, had the pleasure of working with some tremendous professionals. Done a terrific job. Yeah, it's been fun, and, and we've seen good football, and, and I think we have presented football uh, in a manner that it just isn't seen on television, and uh, I, I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. Particular thanks to our statistician, Debbie, tonight. He's done a great job. Here's Kerwin Bell on third down, throwing incomplete. Well, this is a point in the game where, uh, you know, I think they should be running the football. There's no need to get any more points on the board here. They should be running the football and just getting out of here. Could Carl Dunbar be the perpetrator? They do need two buckets to cover Galen. Did you notice that? One they, bucket they won't do? A, yes, they need about four buckets there. <laughs> That's a four-bucket shot on Galen. <laughs> Tracy Bennett here for a 22-yard field goal. And as Bennett drills it through, Galen got soaked. You know, the interesting thing about this kind of win, they have to go back and play next week, and I'm sure that's going through Galen Hall's run, mind right now. Yeah. said, hey, don't do this to me. We got one more big week of work. And there's almost, uh, you know, you win this easy, and it, it, something kind of happens to you. And why are the coaches... That doesn't happen. John, why are coaches surprised anymore when that happens to them? Well, I just think, you, you know, I... You don't want to turn around and look at them and get it in the face. I guess that's what it is. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how do you score that for accuracy. That's, hey, that's the same guy that missed the pass, so you can get an idea what what kind of hands that guy's got. Uh, well, fortunately for Galen Hall, it's about 85 degrees and very humid here tonight, so that probably feels pretty good right now. Yeah. Well, he had his team very well prepared, both emotionally and physically, and they had a couple breaks early in the game, but but they were here ready to go and uh, dominated the game from the outset. Oh, you're getting everybody down there. Uh, See, now, Michael Barkan were really on the ball. He'd be down there getting doused. When was the last, you think no, Barkan's no, no, ever no, had a Gatorade no, bath? No, well, thank you, Ted. You know, in, 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 at some point in this we game, the World Bowl. I can remember back when I was an assistant at USC and we had some big wins uh, when John McKay was the coach. And, by this time of the game, he'd get mad at something. So you go into the locker room, and his speech always was, we are the second worst football team in America. Thank God we played the worst football team in America. So he always <laughs> took a little edge off the celebration and uh, tried to get you ready for the next one. James Henry running this kickback for Birmingham as we're down to 52 seconds and counting. Well, next week, Orlando will be in Montreal. They will play the winner of tomorrow's Barcelona-Sacramento game. And you know what? All these players that go there next week will be thinking about, right? There's money involved, but they're all going to be thinking about a ring. Yeah, and, and, and more than that, uh, Ted, they're champions. You know, they got a chance to be champions, that's and that's right. what's the great thing. But it's, it's amazing how in, in pro sports, more than the money, it's the ring. And then, then no matter what the sport is, the championship, even the London Monarchs last year, I believe, wasn't it? Larry Kennan asked for his ring to be special delivered to him in Seattle where he's with the right? Seahawks. Yeah. That's great. They want the ring. Against the team that Orlando has. Ron Moore loops it out, and Kirkpatrick makes a nice catch and out of bounds. No, nope. call that incomplete. No possession and an incomplete pass. No, I did. 41 seconds remaining. And uh, the Citrus Bolts is about empty now. I think most of the Thunder fanatics have gone outdoors to continue their celebration. Well, we had a good crowd and a very enthusiastic crowd, and they got a chance to see a team play a great football game. And... Uh, uh, you know, it's too bad there are more games here. You know, if, if this World Bowl were played here next week, we'd probably have close to a 50,000 crowd and a very loud and excited crowd. 28,000. That was the uh, 28,000 to change the announced attendance tonight. All caught by Hopkins. Just shy of midfield. 
Put a ball in the middle. And there's our KFC player of the game, Joe Howard Johnson, with two explosive first half touchdowns. One a pass catch, one a punt return. And Kentucky Fried Chicken will donate $1,000 to Joe Howard Johnson's name to Dare Drug Abuse Resistance Education. Get out here, Todd. Get out here, Todd. is caught by Kirk or by Hopkins who carries it inside the 35 and will stop the clock to move the chains with five seconds remaining. Now Monday they're heading to Montreal. Well, I'm Galen glad doesn't look particularly excited about this right now, John. Pardon? Galen, no, Galen's thinking ahead. Galen's yeah. already stopped celebrating. He's already on the next one. That's a tough thing about a coach. You don't get to enjoy it very long. And he's already putting that game face on so that everybody knows. The final play, an incomplete pass, and the Orlando Thunder. Winners of the North American East, owners of the best record in the World League this season, are heading to Montreal and the 1992 World Bowl. They did it in convincing fashion. They dominated Birmingham in the first quarter. Never let this be a game. No, that's right. It was over fast. And, uh, that just happens that way sometimes. And not much Galen Hall could do to console Chan Gailey after a most disappointing night for Birmingham. But joy for Orlando. Thunder are going to Montreal. Winners 45-7. We'll come back to talk with winning coach Galen Hall in just a moment.